ahead and begin. So welcome to the Lander County Commission meeting, uh, Town Board of Battle Mountain and Austin Board of County Highways Commissioners, June 11th, 2020. It's also being done through via audio conference. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Brian, would you read the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, please? We'll go ahead and have a moment of silence. All right, we're going to go ahead and move forward. So, Lambda County Commission may break for lunch from 12 p.m. to 1.15 p.m. Any agenda item may be taken out of order, may be combined for consideration by the public body, and items may be pulled or removed from the agenda at any time. So commission reports on meetings, conferences, and seminars attended. Go ahead. Okay, I will start. Thank you. Uh, on the 29th of May, we did have uh, our NACO meeting virtually. Um, there were a couple different things, of course. As you know, we have decided to do our annual meeting in July virtual also. So there will be a business meeting and a town hall meeting for that. Um, we have canceled our workshops through September for right now. And an interesting point that they were bringing out about our teachers was only two out of the five teachers uh, will not be returning in the state of Nevada because of the COVID-19. So. As we go into phase three, it's going to be difficult everywhere, even opening with the classrooms. Um, NACO did send in their comment letter for the uh, BLM's draft environmental impact statement, the EIS, that they did for fuel reduction and rangeland restoration. So our comments went in on that. On the 3rd of June, I did have a justice and public safety um, national meeting. Uh, we're finishing up our resolutions, of course, that will be brought and approved at our business meeting in July for NACO. And on the 5th of, no, uh, 5th of November, <laughs> the, the 5th of June, <laughs> I'm really pushing it here, um, I did sit on, on a webinar uh, that was given by our public health in Nevada, and it was on domestic and family violence and abuse. And... It, it really was, was extremely interesting on some things and some ideas that they give us to even put in our policies and procedures. But, uh, of course, it, it really has spiked, even though a lot of our people that, um, that are reported, the children especially, um, are usually reported through the schools. Those are the biggest numbers. And, of course, that's not happening. So we don't really have a good idea because they're in a, a home situation sometimes with neglect and such that we don't get to pick up on. But it was interesting. Um, one of the folks on the line was the extension coordinator, uh, education coordinator from Nevada Cooperative Extension from Elko. And she was talking about their needs assessment. Uh, before we lost our educator, they were putting together a needs assessment, but it didn't go out. So we haven't done one yet. But number one from their county needs assessment was domestic and family violence um, and the, the need to educate and to get on top of that. So they have been addressing that in a very unusual way with some, some special classes and such, which I'm hoping if we can get online, we can look at something like that. And I say online, I mean with an educator soon to see what's happening. Um, on the 8th of June, we did have an airport board meeting in Austin. We're looking at the signs. If you remember, we have some special military vehicles that are, that are out there permanently uh, at the airport, and we've been looking at signs. So um, they have the signs done. They haven't brought them to us yet, but we're looking at some ways to put them up and how we can best, if we need to put them on a post, I think if we put them on the vehicle itself, it, uh, it might be a little bit too close, but... We're looking at that. And the other thing is um, the census. And our county is way behind in census. 
Right now, I think we're, we're still under 40 percent. We were at 38 point something percent of, of the folks that have gone online to do that. So we're really pushing that. We're saying, please, please, please. That means um, uh, it takes 10 minutes. There's 10 questions, and it's worth what's well, for the next 10 years, and it's worth $20,000 a person. So we, we need to keep encouraging our folks and maybe put something at the Civic Center. Um, please turn in your census to how important it is. I, I've spoken with a couple people that think that the census is just for education. And I went, oh, no, we use it for a lot of different funding. And they said, well, we don't have any kids in school, so I didn't think it was that important. I went, oh, okay, well, yes, education takes a lot of our tax dollars. That's true. And, yes, they will get some of some of the census money, but uh, we need to have that everywhere. So, thank you. I um, almost had a pool lock meeting. It was canceled the afternoon of the meeting, no quorum. Um, and I had a phone in meeting with uh, Nevada Works on the budget. That's it. Oh, you're in oh, Okay, let me start again. Um, almost had a pool lock meeting. There was no quorum, so it was canceled the afternoon of the meeting or was supposed to be the meeting. Um, and I, I had a phone-in meeting with Nevada Works on the budget, and there hasn't been any discussion about that program being cut. So maybe it's going to stay. Okay. Um, I uh, attended a hospital um, board meeting, and basically we were going over uh, budget, um, getting the budget submitted. We also were uh, dealing with the COVID and making sure that we are getting our 10% that are supposed to be tested. I thought, we, uh, to the best of my knowledge, we're all online as far as um, that goes. And in, in an RDA meeting, and that basically was budget, trying to figure out if, if cuts needed to be made within that budget. And that's those are the meetings that I've attended. Nothing to report. So on the 4th, um, we had a livestock uh, board meeting. And that will be um, a little bit of what we discussed is, is on the agenda today. And on the 9th was a LEPSI meeting. Um, pretty short and sweet. We are going to be doing our tabletop exercise and a field exercise for the LEPSI um, coming up. So I'm planning that so we can be in compliance with the state. Yeah, very good. Thank you. So for staff, um, reports on meetings, conferences, seminars attended. So one of the things that um, we're going to have to do next week is a, a special meeting for the canvas of the boat of the vote. Um, the way it's working right now, uh, we have, I think, about seven, six or seven days left before the final tally is presented. Um, and then the commission has to ratify the canvas of the boat vote for the, the county clerk. So um, Sadie's given, actually given me an agenda request for a special meeting, um, but we haven't just put, a, put a date on it yet. This would be a very simple meeting, um, probably take no more than about 10 minutes total. Um, one item, you guys will uh, ratify the, the canvas of the vote, and then it'll be uh, official results. I did make contact with Lee Bonner of NDOT regarding our workshop meeting. Um, they have actually rescheduled for October once their uh, board decides what the, what the uh, projects will be for the next fiscal year. So he's, he wanted to know if the commission wanted to wait and have that meeting in October, or he's available for a phone conference if there's anything that the commission wants to ask for or um, talk about as far as upcoming projects. Um, of course, one of the hot areas is there at the Maverick with the, uh, the diesel trucks, and we've had some several in-depth discussions about that. There's a couple options we're working on right now. Nothing will go forward until, um, as, as far as, until the, until the board approves it. I think that's it. The rest of the stuff I have is on the agenda. Keith, I, I did hear, um, actually, on one of the TV stations that, NDOT was canceling nine of their programs that they thought they were going to go forward with uh, that they had on their list, but yes. they were not funded. So those right. were canceled. So I guess the question is maybe you could ask them which ones they're going forward with and which ones they're not, if that, how that affects our county. 
Okay. Well, of course, everybody knows we're going ahead with the Highway 50 project in Austin. That is underway. <laughs> going as we strong. Speak. We've uh, we've already attended a meeting um, in Austin and uh, with the crews down there and DOT, all the cooperating ag agencies. So that that is moving forward as we speak. One thing I did want to make sure, and I did forget this. Did you all get the letter from the Elko County Library? Okay, she mailed it to each commissioner, I believe. Um, okay, well, we will go over that. That is on the agenda. I did do some research on that that item on their contract. I have some, an explanation for it, and then we'll get into what um, the recommendation that I would put forth. Thank you. All right, moving forward for public comment. For non-agendized items only, persons are invited to submit comments in writing and or attend and make comments on any non-agendized item at the board meeting, if any. And discussion of those comments are at the discretion of the board. All public comments may be limited to three minutes per person, again, at the discretion of the board. Reasonable restrictions may be placed on public comment based upon time, place, and manner, but public comment Based upon viewpoint, may not be restricted. Is there any public comment? No. All right. Without there being any public comment. Muted. I'm going to go ahead and move forward. Unmuted. On the consent items. So, all matters listed under the consent items are cons uh, considered routine and may be acted upon by the Board of County Commissioners with one action without extensive discussion. Any member of the board um, or any citizen may request that an item be taken uh, from the consent agenda discussed and acted upon separately during the meeting. Consent uh, agenda materials are available at the Lambda County Clerk's Office for viewing and copies are available at a nominal fee. So for number one, we have approval of June 11th, 2020 agenda notice. Number two, approval of December 5th, 2019 meeting minutes. Number three, approval of December 19th, 2019 meeting minutes. Number four, approval of January 9th, 2020 meeting minutes. Number five, approval of January 23rd, 2020 meeting minutes. Number six, approval of February 27th, 2020 meeting minutes. Number seven, approval of April 23rd, 2020 meeting minutes. Number eight, approval of May 7th, 2020 special budget workshop meeting minutes. Number nine, approval of May 14th, 2020 meeting minutes. Number 10, approval of May 19th, 2020 special budget workshop meeting minutes. Number 11, approval of May 21st, 2020 meeting minutes. 12, approval of May 28th, 2020 special meeting minutes. And number 13, approval of payroll change requests. So, we're going to have to go ahead and pull out number five for approval of January 23rd, 2020 meeting minutes because we don't have those. We're going to have to pull out um, uh, February 27th, 2020 meeting minutes because we do not have those. We're going to pull out April 23rd, 2020 meeting minutes. We do not we, have those. Actually, we have April 23rd. Do we? we? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to leave number seven in. So May 7th, 2020 special budget workshop meeting minutes. To be pulled. May 14th, 2020 meeting minutes to be pulled. May 19th, 2020 special budget workshop meeting minutes to be pulled. May 21st, 2020 meeting minutes to be pulled. And May 28th, 2020 special meeting minutes to be pulled. I will make a motion that we approve, number one, the approval of the agenda notice, number two, the December 5th, 2019 meeting minutes, number three, December 19th meeting minutes, number four, January 9th, 2020 meeting minutes, number seven, April 23rd, 2020 meeting minutes, and the 13, approval of payroll change requests, if nobody has any reason to pull that. I'll second. All right, is there any <coughs> Just, I, I want to say something. Just so that people understand, these minutes get approved in a meeting when we get them back from the transcriber and not before because we just don't get them. And if there's 
if the transcriber's slow, that's why we can't approve them consecutively month after month. So just so you understand that. So on that note, I do want to also comment. Um, our, our meetings are going a lot smoother now. Um, we're not talking over each other. And that was one of the issues why our transcriber was having problems transcribing the meeting minutes. So it's not a matter of her being slow. It's She has to go through these minutes uh, recordings several times to make sure that they're correct. And I think she does a wonderful job, and she's trying the best she can. So I would like to give her kudos for that, for basically putting up with us talking over each other. But we're getting better. And so with that being said, also um, in the public, we have to be really careful that you guys try to keep your um, talking low because sometimes when you're talking in the audience, it, that's what she's picking up, and it's hard for her to transcribe. So just keep, when you're talking to each other, try to keep that in mind. So then um, we have a first and a second. So all in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? All right. I'll move forward. So for number one for commission, for possible action to approve, disapprove the payment of bills. Do I have some to pull out? Check numbers? No, you won't pull them out. I'll oh, just we'll just vote on them. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do you have those numbers as well for Brian? I do. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Yes. Um, there's three checks, 207856, 207912, and 208002. So I ask those to be pulled out from the payment of bills, and I make a motion we pay the balance. I'll second. I'll second. All right. Any public comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 And then I'll make a motion we pay check number 207856, 207912, and 208002. Do we have I'll a second? Second. second. All right. Uh, any public comment? All right, all in favor? No. Aye. 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 Right. And I abstain from for their right. payments to my employer. All right, very good. Um, all right, Kathy? Yes. Again, I would like to, um, I know it's it's just been a couple weeks since this was mentioned, that going through the payment of the bills, it did say a lot of customer no name, or, well, just customer numbers and account numbers, and I hope in the future that we'll, we will be putting um, better descriptions on those payment of the bills and what each invoice is for. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. All right, so number two, for possible action to update and give direction on moving forward um, with the Battle Mountain Levy. Okay, so uh, Tom with uh, Tom and Clint, oh, and Anthony are here with the Summit Engineering. They've made quite a bit of progress. Kathy, I have a question. All right. Um, is 10 minutes going to be enough? I we have a couple so, uh, I've, I've spoken with Tom about this, Tom Gallagher. Um, when we get to that time frame for the reading of the ordinance, we will stop their presentation, move ahead with the reading of the ordinance, and then they'll continue when we're finished with the reading okay. of the ordinance. Thank you. Thank you.
<laughs> All right, good morning, commissioners. Good morning, everyone that's attending. Um, my name is Anthony Newton, like Keith mentioned. This is Tom Gallagher. We're here with Clint TC as well. We're all from Summit Engineering. Um, and we're just here giving you guys an update on our progress made on the Battle Mountain Levy project. So, the first sheet here is very similar to what I showed you guys last time, but there's a little more info there. So, does everyone, at least the commissioners, have this print off because it's a little hard to see up there. So the big red squares are the bar areas that hasn't changed much since last time. Um, the wetlands are the same obviously. One thing that wasn't shown on there last time were the extent of the roadway improvements that we were planning on doing which is the big fat green line on there on Mule Shoe, Front Street, a uh, little piece on SR-806 and Marble Ranch Road. Um, as far as the levee goes, that's the dashed blue line. Since the last time we were here, the, the biggest thing that's been done on that is the extension on the south end off of Marble Ranch. Um, that's something that, that we had come across uh, through all of FEMA's literature that we had not been made aware of at the time. Uh, they require you to end or start the levee at three foot higher than the flood elevation. So similar to the freeboard that we have on it, but even though the ground is dry, we want it to be three foot higher. So we had to extend it out about 1,600 linear feet from Marble Ranch there to get that to work. And then similarly, on the north end, on SR-806, um, we had to go along a little portion of that, about six or 700 feet. Um, and, and that's kind of a different situation. We didn't have high ground there, but uh, we found some ways to get around that by doing a breach analysis there. Um, there's also shown on there the magenta and cyan lines. Those are the proposed and existing flood boundaries. Again, we're, our hydrologist is kind of tweaking that, but at this scale, it, it'll be immaterial the changes that come from that. And then, of course, the orange dash line, we have the existing levy shown on there just for reference. So this is just kind of a cool little video that we put together for everyone to kind of see um, a, con a conceptual deal of it um, that we used in SketchUp. And and this one, we did a complete 180 from that last sheet that you saw. North is now to our right instead of our left. Sure, run from right here. Mm -hmm. You had one of the slides up, so I don't think. I have it. This is the video. Oh. It's like a three minute video <laughs> that I'm not going to be able to show, apparently. Um, but I guess we'll just skip. I had some stills um, from the video. This is just to give everyone an idea of the immensity of the scale of the culverts that we're going to be putting in Mule Shoe and Front Street. Uh, Mule Shoe is going to have, what we're planning on doing is approximately 23 
four by twelve concrete box culverts through there. Um, you can kind of see at the top of the picture there's another group of culverts in Milshu there, and Front Street is going to be very similar. I have a question on that. So yeah. you're putting that in to increase the flow, but I looked at the flood uh, when we had the last great flood here. Mm -hmm. um, what is that? What good is that going to do when everything's already backed up? It's going to have no place to flow because it's all backed up. So, so we're matching. So fronts the next thing downstream from I eighty, right? We're matching the cross sectional area of all the flow conveyance, so all the structures in eighty at front, and then the next blockage is the railroad, which right. has historically been a big issue. But that we're just filling up and going over because we can't, we don't want to mess with the railroad that much. I understand what you're saying, but my que my question is, you've seen the map. At the height of that flood, if you look out toward Mo that whole river, that was, it's like the water had nowhere to go. It was completely, where, did it, where does it go? I mean, we put all this flow in, but where does it go when you have that much water? Like that, what happened back then? Well, the railroad is what really slowed it down last time. Yeah. Structures that are designed now, based on all the standards that FEMA makes us use and everything else, are adequate to pass that flow. And as Anthony yeah. said, the railroad, we're not going to be raising the railroad. Right. Uh, we'll be putting a gate on right. the railroad. Yeah, in regards to that, I, I know when they, the, they blew the railroad, it all flowed out. But that, that, from my understanding, was because all the water that had backed up had already subsided to two. So when it did blow, it had a place to go. What I'm saying is that when that's all there, all that water is built up there. The flow increase is going to do nothing because it has no place to go. You're you're not. Are you talking about downstream into the Humboldt? Yes, exactly. Yeah, if you look at that map, that whole area was just nothing but wetlands. It's like it's like you what? increase the flow, but it's, it has nowhere to go. Well, this that's my question. So, well, it's gonna it's gonna hit the Humboldt. There's no question about yeah. it. And the biggest problem with this whole area is you're aware that. Reese River, when it has a flood, it's about six inches deep and about four miles wide. Right. Right. Yeah. It's uh, the reason the Steamboat and Barge Company never worked. Um, so this is the only way that we've been able to, turn, to determine to contain it, keep it out of Battle Mountain, and satisfy the Corps. And, well, satisfying the Corps is a little more difficult than, <laughs> than what... Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Pause right now, and then we'll go to number three and come back. Yeah, maybe he can make this yeah, Try messing with the video one. Oh, then you have to ask these guys how that works. <laughs> You're fine doing that. So, okay, we can, we're going to go ahead and move on to number three. Okay. Hmm? <coughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, move, uh, move on to number three. Uh, for a possible action to approve, disapprove the adoption of the Ordinance 2020-01 finalization of the dissolution of the Lander County Combined Sewer and Water District 2 General Improvement District and its Board of Trustees and authorize the chair to sign. Madam Chair? Yes. So did we receive any complaints during the comment period or any comments at all? We did no. not. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So. Lenny, did you want to speak? Yeah. You want to come up? you got to come up here pretty please. Thank you. <coughs> My name's uh, Lenny Shepard, and I was here during the flood, and the railroad caused part of it. But that's because the state highway didn't have a big enough culvert. Oh, we're coming. We're going to come back to that one. We oh. had to jump forward, and you were absolutely able to come right back up. But we have to do the uh, this one because we're on a time schedule okay. for this. But you're more than welcome to come back because we're coming back to that. Okay. All righty. So. Yeah, we'll put the comments. 
So do we have any public comment on this item? Hi, are you there? <laughs> Hi, are you there? I am. They don't have to read the whole ordinance, right? Just the title? That's correct. You need to read the title of the ordinance. I need. Um, okay, so I, I, I do go ahead, or whoever makes the motion. Whoever's going to read it. Oh. Yeah. Alright. So, four. Notice of ordinance proposal, ordinance um, number LC 2020-01. Summary. An ordinance finalizing the dissolution of the... You hear better on your phone. Um, stop the number right there and then that's the code. Muted. So Unmuted. Are we, are we ready? Okay, sorry. All right, so I'm going to start that over again. So an ordinance finalizing the dissolution of the Lander County Combined Sewer and Water District Number 2 General Improvement District and its Board of Trustees title. An ordinance providing for the full consideration of the, uh, for protests of the final dissolution of the Lander County Combined Sewer and Water District 2 General Improvement District and its Board of Trustees providing for the final dissolution of the Lander County Combined Sewer and Water District Number 2 General Improvement District and its Board of Trustees and providing for other matters properly related thereto. The public hearing of the adoption of the ordinance do I need to read all that into? No, okay, fine. all right. So, go ahead. Can we double check? Is Austin on the line? Please. Uh, Austin, are you on the line? Did we call Austin? They Austin's know. been calling in, so we might need to call them. If yeah. They have been. We're calling. here. Oh, are you there? Are, are, so, were you able to hear all of that? Yes. All right. Very good. Thank you. All right, thanks. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So. Are we yeah, I'll make a motion that uh, we approve. All right. Do we have a second? A second. Do we have any public comment? Robert, will you unmute? Tell me when you're ready. So, are we ready? Do we have any public comment? All right. Without any hurt, being heard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Muted. Unmuted. So we're going to go ahead and go backward to uh, number two on the levy project. So, I don't think I'm going to be able to get the video to work, unfortunately. But, um, so where were we at, Brian? Did you still want to? Well, yeah, I was just, he was answering yeah. my questions. So. so for the record, I'm Clint TC with Summit Engineering. Um, one of the major reasons we have all the culverts is to get both Mule Shoe and uh, Front Street raised enough so that during a flood event that you still got traffic movement, emergency traffic. Especially, um, the the water does move towards the north very slow, and that's the volume we need to do to pass it because it's going so slow. Oh. So, in essence, so. okay. So it's basically just kind of a balance on one side to the other until gotcha. we get to the railroad tracks, and then it goes as a weir. Right. Mm -hmm. so. All right. So. We yeah, just like I was saying, this is going to be a very similar um, scenario on Front Street. And then the next still I had from the video was just to give everyone a better idea of the closure structure at the railroad tracks. Um, basically, we got that concrete flood wall uh, coming across there. And, and I had mentioned to everyone in the past, uh, those, those two little I-beams that are poured into the wall there on each side. Uh, it's not going to look exactly like that. There's going to be a, a plate 
in the middle of the tracks that a post gets bolted down to on that, and then you just slide like aluminum stop blocks in there stacked up. They're lightweight, easy to handle. People can put them in there as long as we have some training and stuff, um, annually or semi-annually or whatever. It should be a really good system at, at this crossing. We're also planning on a small structure down there on the dry side that we can store these in so they're readily available. So, yeah. That extra post and those stop blocks. And there's also a rubber, they make a custom rubber mold to go over the tracks, that little portion that's exposed between um, the joints and the, and the wall there. So the way that you have it yep. designed now, it isn't any options that we have to choose. It's just a matter of going forward. That's good. And what kind of a time frame are we looking at? Um, when would so, you be able to? So what we're looking start? at is within probably the next six weeks, being ready to submit to FEMA. Okay, then the government process starts. So I can't <laughs> give you a time frame beyond that. Um, on our schedule right now, if everything went perfect, we should be able to be under construction by this time next year. But that's depending upon our review process through the government agencies to go good. So. Thank you. My only concern is that um, there isn't a flood for a long time, and those barriers that are put up, at that time nobody knows where they're at. <laughs> Well, so, that's why we were putting the storage <laughs> thing right there. Where, so if it's going to, I mean, it's going to be right there so they know yeah, that, that yeah, that's like, where like, they go. Yeah, we're looking, like, we're standing on the flood side where this picture is, uh -huh. and we're looking kind of towards Battle Mountain. Literally, like, right on the other side of that wall on the left-hand okay. side is where we were planning on. With big letters, it says, <laughs> this yeah. is what's yeah. in here. <laughs> yeah, grab these and put them in there. All right, very good, thank but you. But it, it won't be right <laughs> next to the tracks because we want to get off railroad. Yes, railroad, yes. So we are dealing I understand with that. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next still, and again, I apologize about the video. This would have made a lot more sense if that would have ran. But uh, this was just, the, this is our second concrete flood wall uh, just on the north side of I 80 where we crossed through there. Uh, the little piece that you can see in the tan there, uh, that's that that's an existing uh, box culvert under 80, and we're going to be dowling into the head wall of that there, and it takes off and goes for about five or 600 feet. It's a pretty long one. Anthony? Yeah. You said that that is um, um, sorry. Um, what side of, of 80 is that? It's just side. on the north side, north. so it okay. comes out of the westbound lane and basement. Okay. So, so yeah. this concrete wall is to, we have to tie into the existing levy at 80 because of that box culvert. So that's one of our governmental approvals we're going to need from Army Corps since we're touching their levy. But then the wall is to just get us away from their levy, their jurisdiction, back to where we can do a earthen dike again. So. Yeah, it's just a footprint issue, and we also wanted to utilize that culvert and not cut it off, because that was the other option. Go on the other side of it, stay away from it, but then we're taking away that conveyance, so that doesn't really make sense. Going under 80 is, would be a real problem. Yeah. Oh, I was just, yeah. I, I know which culvert you're talking about. Yeah. I think everybody around here calls it the bowling alley. Yeah, that's the um, one that you can drive through pretty much, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, and then the next slide here just shows uh, some of the major things we've completed here since the last time we, we met with you guys. Uh, Lander County has signed a preliminary engineering contract with the railroad. Um, we need to work on getting all of our submittals to them to get that license from them, but we have that agreement in place, which they're that was really hard to do because they do not respond. <laughs> and um, SWCA, our environmental consultant, they have gotten an approved pre-jurisdictional determination from the Army Corps. Basically what that means is that our environmental has submitted to the Army Corps um, their delineation of wetlands and waters of the U.S. and 
the Army Corps is in concurrence with that. So they agree with what the environmental has come up with. And now, through all of the permitting processes that I'm about to bring up, we need to avoid those as much as possible to avoid headaches. Oh, sorry. And then um, we've got 90% uh, construction plans. I've got those here with me today. If anyone wants to see those. Uh, everything's meeting FEMA now, as far as we know, hopefully, because things keep popping up, but um, we've got it really clear in our heads now, so I think we're good on that now. Um, we've got plans ready for the encroachments on NDOT and the railroad, so we just need to clean those up a little bit and get them submitted, and we've coordinated with um, a lot of land owners that we're, we're encroaching on, and not that there's that many, but, um, and all the stakeholders again, so. Um, some stuff that we're working on, again, like I mentioned, is just getting that stuff submitted to end on the railroad. Um, acquiring easements from all the private landowners and um, whatnot for the levy and, and borrow areas. Mainly, that's what it's going to be. Maybe some uh, temporary easement for haul routes. Uh, our hydrologist, do hydrology, is working on getting everything together for that big Comar application that Lander County is going to have to go in with him jointly to submit, just so that you guys are aware of that. Um, and then the, the, the next. So once he gets that Clomar submitted, like Clint mentioned, that's the part that's going to FEMA. The next step is going to be uh, working with the Corps, and that's going to be the 408 permit. And that's where everything is kind of a guesstimate at that point, because um, who knows? But we'll get to the schedule here at the end. Um, and then. Between the time the slide was written and, and now, our, our cultural consultant has actually updated that report from those extensions I talked about to the north and south of the levee off of Marble Ranch and along SR 806. She had to revisit that, come back out, make a site visit, and update that report. So she's ready to go again, but um, we'll get to the timelines here. So, um, again, we're working on NDOT and UPRR. That's that's my next biggest task that I'm working on, getting, getting really going with those guys, even though we've coordinated with them somewhat. Finalize easement documents. Uh, finalize the emergency action plan, which we need to do per Nevada Department of Water Resources and FEMA. Uh, operation and maintenance manual, FEMA requirement. Flood management plan and technical specifications. And then our geotech department is currently working on finalizing that report and getting it wrapped up. The next um, important thing is our structural, getting those, those flood walls all straightened out for us and designed to include in our plan set for our submittal to FEMA and the Army Corps. And the railroad. And the railroad. <laughs> <laughs> and then DOT. <laughs> and then uh, our hydrologist, like I said, is working on getting everything ready for that big Clomar application. So the reason I put those three first is because the work that Summit has done, the, the work that Summit has left to do, the work that Hartman has left to do, the structural and the work that the hydrologist has to do is all necessary to go in for the Clomar and the 408, <laughs> which is the first of the 408 permitting process and then the 404. So this is the same uh, slide that I showed you for the environmental last time. Um, we're still on that same route. It's the path of least resistance with getting this 408 submitted. Uh, that process can take up to six to eight months is what they estimate. And then once the 408 gets approved, um, we really 
have some overlap on the 408 and the 404, but there's really no sense in submitting for the 404, which the 404 is the wetlands permit. Sorry for not clarifying that. The 408 is the permission to alter a federal public works project. So once we submit to them all of these plans and specifications, and they say, yeah, go ahead, then that's a good time to take an inventory on the wetlands. Because why do it at that point if, <coughs> if we go in for the 408 and they say, no, you got to move something, that might impact the wetlands. So there's really no sense in going in for that until we get their go ahead. Um, our cultural consultant, like I said, that report's ready to go. This is just the timeline uh, that she gave us on once that report goes in. And for her to submit this report to SHPO, um, the county and or the county needs to go in for that 404. So again, that's kind of the organization that I was trying to get after here. We need to get that that Comar first, the 408 after, and then the 404 and the cultural can submit then. And then uh, you guys have in your your books here, I think, a copy of this schedule that we anticipated and. Like Clint was saying, just this here is this like best case good. scenario. <laughs> so, yeah, this is best case scenario because we can we, we can hit those timelines, but we there's it's so hard to tell with how the core is going to handle it, how FEMA is going to handle it. Yeah, so. maybe to clarify. Non-technical standpoint: If if this was a normal project, these would be out to bid right now. But with all the opportunities we've run into with core and uh, and that stuff, and I'm sure you're all aware that the core has sent Finder County a bill. Uh, the attorney that's working with us, Steve Mollett, has sent the core quite a bit of correspondence, demanding that they show us what they did. For their bill, and they've yet to be able to produce what they have actually done. Because if they had actually done something, it would be included in this plan set, which they haven't. Okay, and I talked to the attorney yesterday, and his feeling is if the court is not going to intervene with FEMA whatsoever, and the attorney for the court told Steve Mollett that they would guarantee they would not stop that permit. And if that's the case, his recommendation after requesting mediation, arbitration, whatever they're going to do to try to get that money, which they won't respond to, is just let it sit. And if they ever come up with a reason that you might owe them that money, which I can't imagine what it is, except for delay a game, and that's probably, I, I don't know how much that's worth in Lander County. I know it's not worth anything to me, but that's that's where it is right now. And he stands right in the middle of the core, but he finally said, we got to just back off. We're not going to intervene. The approval we need is from FEMA. And the core, as long as they work on the 404 and the 408, and don't intervene with FEMA. FEMA, I don't think, really cares what the court says. So that's kind of where we are in that in that light. Now, once this project's completed, is that, and I know this question's been asked before, but I, it's been a long time ago and I can't remember. Once this project is completed, as far as the people like on this side of the railroad tracks and the flood insurance that are so far out, is that going to affect it to where that's going to alleviate all that these people having to pay flood insurance? They will still be in what's called a shaded X, which means that um, if there was ever a levee failure or something, that it could get flooded, but the probability is way down, so the flood insurance rates should Okay, very good. Thank you. The way you delineate the shaded X is you do an analysis without the levy. So like the current condition, and then you do it with the levy, and everything that you took out becomes a shaded X. Okay. 
Kathy. Thank you. Uh, and, and Tom, correct me if I'm wrong on this, because when it did come up before, when you were speaking on it, uh, I think what you said is, yeah, it should, it could, but there is no guarantee that it will. Right. Until FEMA approves. Right. If, if, if they approve the shade of decks, then all the insurance people are all going to base the premiums based on that. Okay. Perfect. Hopefully. Yeah. Not necessarily. I, I think we're better off going this route, though, because the core's route, which I couldn't believe, uh, they, well, first of all, they were using a flood model that FEMA doesn't accept. Okay. And their route was they're going to go ahead and do all the plans and do everything else and then go talk to FEMA. They weren't going to talk to FEMA. We had to talk to FEMA and justify their plan. Yeah, so we, we've taken one step around them. And at one point, it sounded like they were very upset about that. But then the attorney called and straightened that out. That they got unupset, obviously. So I think there's been a lot of obstacles in this project, to say the least. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, you know you had some public comment. Yes, I know. I was no, I was just going to ask. Do you want to do that before we do the motion? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Who do you want to? My name is Lenny Shepard, and I was here during the flood, and they built the, I don't know when they built this, at 16 flood dike they have now, but it hasn't flooded since. And if this makes everybody's flood insurance go away, then go for it. But if we still got to pay flood insurance, you're wasting your time. The, the, all the culverts are in except on mule shoe. It, it wouldn't handle it. There's more culverts in there now than... But if you go out here where they're putting the new water line and drive down the ditch of Reese River, you can go down there and see where all the dirt is. It floods, it pushes dirt up, and the water goes down, all the silt falls out. No water will reach those culverts if you don't clean those ditches. That's just the way it is. I mean, I'm not an expert on it, but I, I do have an eyeball when it when it, the ground's lower, higher there, it's not gonna go over the hill. You gotta make a ditch to make all, some of those culverts have, in the state highway have never run any water because all those ditches are they're all silted in. It's no different than a borrow ditch on the road. You you got to clean it if you want drainage. And I don't know. They're not. Nobody's going to save any money on flood insurance. It's a waste of money. That's money. that's my opinion. On on the flood insurance, I, that was my concern too. And, and what I've heard is, it's the banks Our, that decide. Our, excuse me. Oh, it's the banks that decide um, whether or not they're going to make you have flood insurance or not if you're in a flood zone, even if it's corrected. I, I mean... Well, they, everything's in a flood zone, but that how far do you want to build a dike from here to Austin along Reese River so it doesn't... You're going to back it up somewhere. It has to go downhill. You can't keep backing the water up. And it, the county would take their scraper out there and start right in the bottom of the ditch from the Reese River culvert out there, the Reese River Bridge, and clean three ditches to those three deals, I think you'd solve your problem for two or three years until it fills it in again. But clean build a big, ugly cement deal gives them kids something good to paint on, too. I mean, whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lenny. Is there any more public comment? I actually do have a comment on that is I agree if if it's not a guarantee that the rates are going to go down and I don't see a bank spending the money or there you have it or you so don't I have a question because I wasn't here when all of this originated so I just would like to understand of what um, the diet that we have now is not sufficient enough 
to do what we needed to do? Is that how this whole thing came about? So it started out, and it started out well before myself as well, it started out to reconstruct the dike to bring it up so that we could, so that the problem from the 60s wouldn't occur again. We ran into a whole lot of issues with the core that I think a lot of people are well aware of. Um, one of them being a million dollar bill that they did nothing to earn or there was no backup to support that. So in several discussions with Tom and, and uh, a direction to go, we thought it would be better to actually um, move the levy and put it onto county property. That way the county is solely responsible for it. There was years and years of no maintenance that was done to that levy, that, and that was part of the problem. Fences were torn down, so there was, there was issues with the existing levy. Once um, we had, Tom and I talked about it, we decided that to bring it to the, the previous commission that we would look at a different um, route that was all county land, county, and then we would keep, maintain it uh, regularly. That's where we got to today, is how the, it moved, and we can avoid a lot of the uh, permitting process if we put it on county property, and we would solely be responsible for the maintenance. So the Corps of Engineers is basically who's responsible for the levy that's there now, correct? So the, the, Corps, the Corps built the levy, mm -hmm. and, and maybe Tom, since you got up, I'll, let, yeah. I'll, give, I'll give you the, the floor. Muted. Unmuted. Muted, You're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of the problems that, that they were going in, in the direction with the Corps, uh, they were trying to redo everything that had ever been done on the project. They were trying to rebuild the existing levy. And one of the benefits of rebuilding the existing levy is they'd have to buy houses or move houses. And when they got to that point, and then at one point they came up with the, uh, some method of studying something subsurface that the water was going to undermine the levee when a flood happened. And, I mean, like there's a conduit going under the levee, I guess. Anybody that's been around here, when, when it rains hard here, you drive from here to the power plant, and there's puddles standing everywhere about a week after it rained. So it's not really highly pervious material. We've done the geotechnical investigations and everything else. At one point, they came up with the idea that we ought to put a cutoff wall underneath the levee, and that cutoff wall could be up to 30 or 40 feet deep. Now, that makes absolutely no sense. I mean, that would be a project for Newmont, not, from, not for a contractor. So at that point, we decided that maybe we were going in the wrong direction. By, and we had, I'm not kidding you, we had numerous meetings with the court. At one point, they brought a whole busload of people to meet with us in our office in Reno. And it was about three years into doing nothing. At these meetings, they'd say, well, we're going to do this, and we're going to get funding sometime, on and on and on. Nothing ever happened. In one meeting, I accused them of working overtime doing nothing. They didn't like that very well. But I think you'll notice in the correspondence that everything we have sent to the court regarding their billings and what they've actually done, on and on and on, <coughs> everything is copied to Amadeus office. And I've talked to him more times than I've talked to my wife. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think this is the way to go. I think it's the only way to go. And I think it's the only way to get flood insurance. I mean, Clayman cleaning the Reese River ditch out, you're still not going to have that amount out of flood line. That's all there is to it. And it's all based on a very major flood that happened once in, that anybody can remember. Well, and my only issue with the levy that's now, if we have no control over what they're doing on it and we get billed at their discretion and we have no say, that I, that's a, a big deal to me where if it's our levy, and we have control over it, and we set the prices of what's going to be fixed at what time. Like I said, we have a million dollar bill they're trying to charge us and no justification, and they can do that at any point. 
So they basically um, are holding us hostage with that levy, correct? I mean, they are, they are they holding us hostage that. with that levy, where if it's our levy, we're controlling it. Unfortunately, um, it has to be redone, but it's our levy and not their levy. And that's why the decision was made to tell the court to stop helping us. Okay. I might add, my first run as commissioner, we dealt with this and we felt it was a, something we needed to bring to the taxpayers, so we had a public hearing on it. Mm -hmm. And if my memory serves me right, that was the consensus was there was favoritism showed to it as long as it was going to handle flood insurance. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I'm kind of there too. I mean, why are we spending millions of dollars to do it if it's not going to help taxpayers save, you know? Right. I think if somebody could have done something that would kind of simulate blowing the railroad tracks up, somebody needed to take a scraper out and move the levee that they built. It would probably take about three days. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at most of that thing, it's just a bump in the, in the ground. So, well, anyway. Uh, I just, like I said, I, I think that if we're getting billed all of this money and we have zero say over it. Yeah. And Keith, have we had any public hearings on these recent, on this recently? I mean, as in, like into the last commission? No, no, we have not. We, we were just moving forward with okay. what from the previous. Is there any way to do any kind of research? I know you've talked to, um, or I believe you've talked to different companies as far as, I mean, there's no guarantee we're going to get the rates lowered. I mean, is there any well, way to FEMA do this? Won't, FEMA won't give you a guarantee right. until they issue a LOMAR, a letter of map revision, at which point the map would be redone. I don't know of any cases where, if, it, if you follow FEMA guidelines, where they said no. Yeah. And the insurance. So if, if once we submit this CLOMAR, if they find everything technically correct, that will put it in the shaded X. That is the best we can do with a levy system. You cannot go to uh, no zone. Once once the levy's in place and the levy's protected, the best they will give you is the shaded X. But like I said, if you get shaded X, then it's up to the insurance companies. I mean, it should reduce your um, insurance tremendously because it's a protected area. So, so I guess if we go if we do the Clomar. That's and then we get the shaded X, right. we're still not 100% committed, but um, That's correct. Like then that. then if there's any way to do... Then you can it, decide construction or no construction. Right, and, and maybe some place. research then oh, to, okay. That's to see okay. if... Yeah. Okay. That makes but unfortunately, you have to go through all this stuff to get yeah. to that point. Well, true, but, but we can pro proceed through that process, and then once we get... We get all that done and, and we're ready to go maybe then do some research to find out you know is it in right. fact going to be a benefit to the taxpayers to just proceed to this point until we can get FEMA's response just move forward and move forward this time so that we oh I'm sorry go ahead John Davis uh, sorry, I came in late. What's the engineer's estimate on this project? I haven't have looked lately. Um, we were right around eight million. I, think. I was going to say it was yeah, just under eight, if I remember right. Yeah. Yeah. Just under eight million. Yeah. Uh, so you're talking five hundred dollars per resident to build it. And what, to Kathy's remark, once we, if you do build this, and the core's out of it. There's zero connection between the core, and they can no longer send you fictitious bills, theoretically. So, so th their bill was actually for the design part when they were designing to raise it, and they designed it between uh, 2010 and 2018, and virtually had nothing done. Okay. That's what the bill was for. Okay. From the existing levy standpoint, it's jurisdictional, it's there right away, but it's up to the county to maintain and spend the money to keep it operational. So. 
But any type of work that they do, they bill us for, even though that they, the pay. I mean, we we're, they want to pay a, charge us a million dollars to do paperwork, so to speak. Okay. John, we actually fired the core a few years ago, and that's why they sent us the bill saying, "This is what we think that we have done for you." So we've been negotiating with them ever since. Okay. Uh, and we've come down tremendously on the bill. Yeah. The my only comment is is that when. My house is probably 40 foot above town, 60 foot. My lender still forcing me to carry flood insurance. Oh, yeah. See, that's the concern that, I have. It's the lender. It's not the insurance carrier. You might reduce your cost of your insurance if you get the certificate, but there's no guarantee, there's no guarantee that they're going to eliminate it. So here's uh, my question. If your insurance is part of your mortgage, do you have to renegotiate your mortgage if you no longer need flood insurance? Well, that's I through mean, your escrow. It's so that's, yeah, it gets yeah. pretty escrow. complex. Well, you go through your uh, escrow. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I, I don't disagree with Mr. Shepard's comments. Uh, it's a maintenance issue. You're going to have a maintenance issue of a levy if you build it. Uh, it's been, it's flooded once. I think the urban folk folklore, we all know what happened, and it shouldn't happen again. I think three years ago we experienced one of the worst floods that we've had in probably since that time, and I don't think anybody had any problems, to my knowledge. So, I mean, $8 million, uh, I, I could spend $8 million on that way faster than I could spend it on a sport complex, because you're going to affect way more people, but is it really justifiable when the return to the homeowner is not guaranteed? So, John, I think um, maybe the thought is moving forward to go through the Colmar and then revisit it again to decide if, if the commission wants to go forward. Um, I don't know how much we're, we're going to be spending on that process, but it's definitely not going to be $8 million. Is there any way to make, take a survey of lenders to see what would happen if you had this certificate? I mean, I don't know. Historically, what do they do in yeah. situations like this? Could you, could you track down 100 lenders and ask that question and get the survey on, yes, we're still going to charge it or, or no? And that was my question, too, is can we do a survey to find out? I don't know. Um, have you guys ever ran into that where you've done a survey of, like, lenders? And, I mean, you're in the business. No, we haven't done yeah. no. Well, we're not in the survey business, so we, we don't do not that kind of survey, mm -hmm. anyway. One thing you need to, that needs to be clarified is the actual accuracy of the maps that the lenders are looking at. Because a lot of them are completely ridiculous. I have one in Reno. This lady's house, they said, along the Truckee River, they had her in the flood, in the flood zone, maybe even in the flood way. And her house is on a bluff above the river probably about 85 feet above the river. And a flood at that point would put the 13th floor of Harris downtown in the flood point. Mm -hmm. So those maps are <coughs> so when basically cartoons. That's why you say you're 50 feet higher. Yeah. Uh, you, in that case, if you, and what we had to do on that one, we had to go in and request a letter of map revision from FEMA to say that that cliff up above the Truckee River was not in the floodway. So it's it's just based on what they think maybe, but it's not based on any actual topographic mapping. That they, I don't know what they use. So if we proceed with the Colmar stage, does that give us like updated mapping? It does, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's the whole point. Yeah. 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 And then at that point, we just decide what we to construct or not to construct. Okay. Right. But at least it gives us updated information. Map. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. So I'd like, for Grammys, for the record, I'd like to point something out to everybody because I hear maintenance quite a bit here. And uh, <clears throat> three years ago when it did flood, as bad as it flooded, I flew over it a number of times and seen it out here in the flat and, and the water does always go to the lowest point, obviously. But here is a picture from the flood in, I think it's David. Um, 
should be what, 62? 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, the Humboldt River is what gets us, not the Reese River. The Reese River, see all this flooding here and the levees, you know, trying to do its thing, but it's not doing its thing, obviously. Um, this right here is backed up because of the Humboldt River out here. There's no flow right here. So if you get the water from here to here faster, you actually increase your problem. I have no problem cleaning ditches, but I don't want anybody to think that we're trying to neglect maintenance um, to, to our river. We, we have no problem going and cleaning ditches, but when I look at this picture, what I see is if we bring the water from the Reese River faster to Battle Mountain by cleaning ditches, and I may be wrong, I, like I said, I wasn't around for that, um, but it, it appears that the problem is out here. I think when they blew the tracks, all this had already receded. The, the river here had receded some. Is so the when tracks, I, Is the tracks blowed on that picture? So we'll look at where it's running over here in, in both spots. You see? Well, see, that's where the, here's where the, because this is a rodeo here, Here's the highway. Okay, that culvert, there was one bridge in there, that plugged up. So all this water come back and flooded the town. When that broke, the state tried to keep it open. You can see the little truck sitting there. Yep. Okay, then it hit the railroad bridge. Well, then it plugged in, then the water come back into town this way. Yes, yes, but see, is what I'm saying is that even if, if, if these were both gone, the, the water that is right here is holding this water. Does, does that make sense? No, because I, I talked to a guy that uh, I, I mean, I'm just going off a picture from my I'm talk, I talked to a guy when they blew the bridge, when they blew the railroad track, they was worried that it was going to, they said the water just went right down, went right back into the Humboldt and the way it went. But you, you it, yes, but the problem is if we had a flood like we did a few years ago, and that whole area was flooded, like it was three years ago, even if you blew that, had that area, there's nowhere for that water to go. Well, because it's still so north, saturated. North, all all this subs, all this all this stuff down there, the rodeo grounds. There was no water running in there. It subbed from under the ground. Last year, when we had swimming yeah, down there, yeah, yeah. yeah, and it it came from under the ground. So yeah, but my theory, so my theory, I just so everybody knows on the maintenance side, so nobody thinks that we're trying to neglect maintenance. Um, it's, it's when when I seen this out here three years ago. When the water was dissipated through through bigger portion of ground, it the ground was taking a bunch more water than had we had we put it in a canal and brought it down to here. See, you gotta realize it was about twenty below zero that winter and this ground was all frozen with about that much snow on it. And it rained and here it comes and it couldn't go in the ground. It it couldn't go in the ground. So it ran on top of the ground, it backed up. This all backed up to about here. And then it went right down Main Street and turned, and you can see it right there. And it all it all came back over to, they just started coming through town. There's guys in boats. But, and it, also, but it also was out of the road, remember? Yes, it was flooded out there. Yeah, the Indian colony flooded, I think. That's right. Everything. So guys, I think you've been there. <laughs> My question is, when it, like last year, because I, or the year before last, because I was a little freaked out about how much water came, was coming close to town because Rogine's house, I mean, the water was coming up all around there, and it had, like you said, I don't know if that was subbing or if that was the water backing up. I don't know because I was I don't. So if that was in that, if we had that aspect now, and we, where would all this water go? It'll go down to the Humboldt. I mean, how can it if it's already up, a temp, uh, up here? If how can it go there? It, my it, question. It will go. It will go down the Humboldt River. That's over. That's and I agree. It will. It will in time. But but it's a, it's the it's the head. Headwater has got to push against you. You should never let it get backed up this far, mm -hmm. and then that won't happen. No, that's, that's, that was my point. Reese River had a lot to do with that. It did. Reese River yeah, so right. I would like to show you guys this picture. Right. Well, whatever. So I'd, I'd like to show you guys this as well, just so everybody can kind of have. And, and I'm happy to clear any ditches. If you guys want us to clear ditches, we will, we will do it. That's not a problem. I think I think it would be a you see my smart head. thing to do. So here's the... Oh. Now, there's the river. Every, no matter how fast you push this, it can't push that. This is my theory. Now, I wasn't here for it. Yeah. They did it in the after picture. 1984. We had a much so, bigger rainstorm than what we just had three years ago. And they what were year was that? in the same situation. They had to get livestock off the river end. Okay. They had to deliver hay. Oh, 
Okay. So, so I guess the last thing I'd leave everybody with, to, just for, for thought here, is the Humboldt, and I can't remember what it is, but it's like 300 miles long, and it's the slowest flowing. It has no fall. It's almost dead. Um, so, so if we get hit heavy from Elko area and from the Reese River at the same time, then then we have we do have a. It's, it's got to be a perfect storm for us to end up what well, we're in. The ground was frozen. It was frozen three feet when when it drained, and that's why all that water stayed on top of the ground. It couldn't go in the ground. Well, that makes sense. Well, Lenny's right because I was home in the service during that time, and I came home for Christmas in 1961. 61. Oh. And it was 28 below zero. Oh yeah, no, I, and like I said, I was not hearing it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a matter of us doing maintenance, and I'm, that's what I'm pointing out. If it's a matter of us doing maintenance, we would happily want to do the maintenance. Okay, and so if we have public comment, like Lou, make sure you come up here so we know who you are. So, um, I'm just sure a quick just um, enlighten me on something. He said when this was originally, and I don't know how long ago this was, so whoever remembers this, please let me know. A handful of years ago, when this first came up, the idea was to put the amount of money that this was going to cost into an account and then take the interest from that account and subsidize the flood insurance for Lander County. Does anybody remember that? Yes. Okay. Okay. How long ago was that? Do you remember? Probably 98. Okay. Yes. So do you remember anything, Keith? Um, whatever, ha I'm just trying to, you know, filter all, you know, everything that's going on here. You remember whatever happened with that? Was that just decided that well, wasn't a good idea, or what happened? So I do that? remember those discussions. Um, I don't remember when it started, mm -hmm. okay. obviously, but I do remember we having discussions before we, in the previous commission, where we talked about taking the money that we would put into the levy and paying. Um, Paying the uh, the flood insurance for the for the affected areas. Um, at the time, what was decided is that we would move ahead with the levy um, and not do that, not do the the insurance. So there was a point uh, six years ago, maybe, where we decided where it was decided to go ahead with the levy and the Army Corps of Engineers, um, and then of course. They were fired recently or let go. So there was discussion of that, but there, it, the discussion ended up being to move forward with the levy itself. Okay, and so with all that being said, was it ever thought to use net proceeds to pay for that instead of? To pay for the to have insurance? To pay for the levy. Well, that, that's. Is that that's, where it's coming from? Is it yeah, being paid it's for? Net, it's net not. proceeds oh, okay. money that's in the, cap, the CCP fund, oh, capital, okay. All right. capital construction project fund. Um, and that money's been rolled okay. over every year. It's been rolled over. I believe there's just under $5 million left in it okay. um, from an original $6 million okay. that, that when I, when I, from what I can remember when I started. There was about $6 million. And it's every year it's rolled over, and like I said, we're just about 4.8, I believe. I can get an exact number if that's oh, what you'd that's like, but we're about just under five million is what's left in that account that's been rolled over for for several for many years. Well, so would it be plausible to move forward to where um, they get the mapping done, and at that point we put it out for the community to decide what they want to do to for public. Yeah, I, think we move I mean, we move to forward to that state. point, yeah. and then at that point, when they've got the mapping, that we um, can put it out for, you know, the community to see what they want. That. I mean, yeah, we need revised maps. Yes, obviously. absolutely. So, so, we have some type of motion. I will make a motion that we move forward with the Battle Mountain Levy Project. Uh, through the um, Cromar process and after the remapping and approval then we can bring it back for further discussion. I'll second it. Any more public comment? Okay. All, in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Muted. All right. Unmuted. Moving on to
number four, for possible action to approve or disapprove the renewal proposed, uh, proposal for Nevada Public Agency Insurance pool in the amount not to exceed 436,130, excuse me, I'm going to start that again, $436,143.75 and approve for the payment of the fiscal year 2020 and 2021 funds. Kathy, I got to get Alan on the phone. Okay. So this is our annual renewal. Okay. We do this every year. Your um, entry is not valid. Pool, uh, pool pack representative Alan Culp, or chief, chief financial officer, will be on the line shortly um, to answer any questions you might have. Like I say, we do this every year. I don't know if she's here. Uh, good morning, Alan. Good morning, Alan. I'm going to transfer you to the bridge, okay? Excellent. Thank you. Your entry is not valid. Are you on there, Alan? Yes. All right, yes, very I good. Am. All right. Alan, I gave you a short Alan. introduction as to uh, our annual renewal. You would be able to answer, answer any questions that the commission has. Um, Susie is not here right now, so it's, um, it's all yours. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Keith. Thank you, uh, Board of County Commissioners. On behalf of the pool, uh, pool uh, PAC staff, I want to thank everybody for your continued support of our program. Uh, we appreciate all our members. We're a member-owned program, and uh, we've in included in the packet coverage summary reports that talks about the different levels of coverage that are provided with your membership pool. Your maintenance deductible is $5,000. Um, the increase that we saw uh, across the board was um, a little over a percent. The increase for Lake County was 11.4%. Uh, the reason your increase is a little bit higher is that your exposures went up. Your total insured values were up 6.13%. Your payroll was up 7.11%. And your auto counts were up... Uh, uh, 6.38 percent. One of the things that the uh, pool uh, prides itself on is our member services to to the members, the different uh, services that we're able to provide, you know, starting with our Hallmark uh, HR program. And Mr. John Bates is your business partner. Uh, and there's a ton of uh, on-site training, e-learning, um, alerts and things we uh, assist all our members with. Um, on the risk management side, we, we do some risk management on We have law enforcement and fire protection programs and training that we offer. We have some risk management grants, and that information um, is included in your packet. Uh, we have a cybersecurity program where we've come out and we've done a cyber assessment for Lander County. And as a matter of fact, uh, Tony Rucci just recently was at your sheriff's department, um, I think a couple of days ago, uh, doing uh, the cyber assessment in, uh, for, for your law enforcement folks. Um, I'd be happy to answer questions that you have. Alan, this is Commissioner Waits. I, I do have, would you just elaborate on that? Um, I thought we had cyber risk coverage, and yet it says you, we have a new separate cyber risk coverage form did we enhance that some way, or? Uh, thank you very much, Commissioner. Uh, yes. Yeah. So this year, um, what the, at the annual board meeting, what we ended up doing is enhancing our cyber coverage, making it a standalone form document that was separate from the property. And the thought process was is we did not want to have conflicts between certain areas of the form that could be construed one way and cyber construed the other. Um, and so if we look at, if your pack $3 million, um, your security failure and private uh, management coverage sublimit is 100,000. The network interruption sublimit is 250,000. And the proof of loss preparation cost is 50,000. And, and all of that, it's been in effect and with the new form, we went retroactive back to July 1, 2015, when we originally started to provide cyber coverage. 
So it's been enhanced. And then our cyber uh, risk management services that we provide, because cyber is becoming more and more critical to our members, to provide more services associated with that. One of the things that we, our loss control committee recommended and we and they approved was no before, which is a software program that sends uh, training and email training for the member members so that their employees learn not to fall uh, prey to phishing scams, clickbait, that type of thing. And if they do open a, an invalid email, then they get directed to uh, training. It's like, you know, hey, you should not have opened this um, type of thing. So that's something that's uh, getting pushed out to the very members to get implemented at, at the entity level. Thank you. Um, I do know that actually all of the counties do belong to, to Poolpack except for well, Washoe Clark and Carson City, I believe. So um, you have always done an outstanding job for us, not only the response time, but your extra training and all the rest that goes with it. So I will make a motion that we approve the renewal proposal from Nevada Public Agency Insurance Pool in the amount not to exceed $436,143.75, and for the approval for payment from the fiscal year 2020 to 2021 funds. Second. So any public comment? Training. Uh, Hi, my name is... Oh. Hi there. Hello. Hi, my name is Jody Moore. I have farmer's insurance in town. And I'm just kind of wondering, do you guys ever bid anything like that out? Has that ever been bid out? No. Pool Pack is actually a self-funded group. Um, but we do, I, I understand but we, that. But we do have agents, and you can check uh, with Pool Pack on that. You know, Commissioner Wade, if I could please answer. Um, every year, Pool Pack, when we go to the marketplace, we look to find the best combination of insurance. So there is, uh, we, we end up placing our coverage at, at a different marketplace. Our property, our property coverage is with a syndicate with Lloyd's Insurance. And uh, the coverage is up to $150 million aggregate. And we've developed great relationships with the market. We bid our insurance as a pool level uh, every year in the renewal uh, process to make sure we're getting the best deal. One of the things is our EAP program. We've got a provider that's going to enhance our coverage at a, a less cost. Looking for other insurance. Muted. Unmuted. Was he just explaining how they pick their agents? Is that what he was doing? Yeah. yeah yes, he was. And um, I can ask Alan if, at a future meeting, um, next one, next meeting or two, if he could show up and actually give an in-person presentation as to how they do it. We just have how they go through the selection process. It's just we need to have approval on this bill so that we actually write a check July 1st and it's hand delivered to the um, to the insurance agency here in town. So yeah, I would suggest that at a later time that we have he come in and have a presentation um, for one so we can hear better. Okay. And then if there is pu more public comment, come in and ask questions at that time. Okay. Uh, so Did you hear that, Alan? I did, and, and I want to apologize. I, I was under the impression that this was an audio meeting only based on the agenda. Otherwise, I would have been uh, in uh, Lander County, uh, as I have been in the past for these updates. So I'll be happy to come back and give a detailed presentation. Thank you so much. Okay, I'll call you a little later this afternoon, Alan, and talk about that other stuff right, as well. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Sorry. We'll coordinate that. We have a motion and a second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any more public comment? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right.
Muted. Unmuted. All right, we're going to go ahead and take about a 10 minute break. Agenda item five. So, for discussion of possible action regarding the Lander County, uh, Lander County, Nevada County Manager Employment Agreement dated August 9, 2018, between Lander County and Keith Western Guard, including but not limited to the termination of the agreement pursuant to Section 4.2. Madam Chair, this is Hi. Okay, we can, it's a little tough to hear you. Hi, this is Kathy. I have been formally notified that uh, this item may involve litigation, and I would advise the commissioners to recess at this point for a litigation meeting and then to resume the county commission meeting following that. All right, very good. So we're going to uh, go ahead. Hi, will you hang up, and Keith will call you when he goes into litigation. I will right now. been read in. Okay. So I'm going to make a motion that we terminate the contract <coughs> dated August 9th, 2018 between Lander County, Nevada's county manager and Lander County employ employment agreement pursuant to section 4.2 thereof to be effective July 10th, 2020. I'll second the motion. May I make a suggestion as to uh, additional term of the motion? Absolutely, hi. Um, I believe it should include uh, the uh, um, the actually the transition. Is that what you're speaking about? No, well, we should include. Uh, that the uh, terms of the uh, buyout pursuant to section 4.2 um, shall be reduced to writing between the employee and uh, the county and authorize the chairman to sign. Okay, could you repeat that again? The terms of the buyout? Um, pursuant to section 4.2 shall be reduced to writing. To be reduced to what? Be reduced to writing. To writing? To writing, yeah. Oh, okay. between the employee and the county and authorize the chairman to sign. Okay, I will amend my motion to include the terms of the buyout pursuant to section 4.2 shall be reduced to writing between the employee and the county and authorize the chair to sign. I'll second the motion. Second. So then, do we, are you ready? Okay, so do we have any public comment? Can we understand what the buyout is, or the taxpayer's budget, and understand what, those, what that dollar amount is? Come on up. Uh, yeah, please, if you have public comment. And then um, state your name, please. Coral Torrance, can we understand what the buyout is and what uh, what goes into this process as taxpayers? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Coral, in the packet is a copy of the contract. 
Um, in right in front of one you. of these? No, the book, the binder. And so if you turn to tab five. So, Good job, so this information, the contract is recorded with the court, recorder's office, so it is public record. It's also um, when the contract is entered into um, in the commissioner packet that is available to the public. So you can read um, what the terms of the contract state. Um, can we understand, though, what this verbiage just was, that it's going to be different? Hi, sir. I'm sorry, Coral. Hi, since that was part of the litigation, is that something we can put forth now, or does it have to wait until the agreement is drawn up? Hi, are you there? I am. Okay. Uh, I don't like to shoot from the hip on these things, so give me just a moment to digest it. Um, I think that perhaps uh, the best way to resolve this question might be to have the agreement when it's been reduced to writing um, presented back to the board because it will be a public document. Uh, rather than authorizing the chairman to sign, have it presented back to the board for approval at the next meeting. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Hi. Thank you, Hi. Trying to put your book back yeah. together. <laughs> it was late and it wasn't there a time now. Is there any other further public comment? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Reluctantly, aye. Muted. Unmuted. All right, moving on. For possible action to approve, disapprove the request from Bartholomew Ramos for the interim uh, department transfer to the position of county manager in the event the current position becomes vacant. So with that being said, uh, so with that being said, current position will come vacant our, July the 10th, 2020. I have a letter here from uh, Mr. Ramos uh, expressing interest. I can read it or I can pass it around, whatever you'd like. I'd like that, Bert. Sorry. Bert. Don't mind, Bert. <coughs> okay. Bert Ramos, for the record. Um, so, I've, this has been a moving target. There's been a lot of talk of this for years, and I don't know what happened in litigation, but I put in my request to Keith because I feel that my time in Lander County and, and the positions I've moved from and to that I do have some working knowledge of this position and obviously it's at the board's pleasure that I would I would like to be interim at least um, and if you guys so choose to go out then I respect that as well and I and I would like to retain my current position um, but be interim in, in between if that makes sense so with that um, I wrote dear Mr. Weston guard in the event the county manager position becomes vacant I formally request an internal department transfer to the position of county manager my background and dedication to Lander County positions me well and makes me a, a significant impact in this leadership role. During my 10 years with Lander County, I have worked in various capacities. From these experiences, I believe I possess the knowledge and experience <clears throat> to be a valuable asset in the role of Lander County Manager. Um, to work... <clears throat> I apologize. A little You're bit right, nervous. just breathe. Um, <laughs> The work environment as a county manager is exciting and challenging to me, and I anticipate the continual growth of my professional career with Lander County. I am aware that there will be further training to fully prepare me for this position, in which I look forward to acquiring new knowledge and additional skills to better my skill set <clears throat> and myself in Lander County for years to come. 
Thank you for your time and consideration, and I look forward to hearing from you. And I support this request from Burt 100 percent. I feel he would do an outstanding job here for Lander County. Well, I'll make a motion that we honor Ercola Ramos' request to be promoted to the county manager. Are we putting him as county manager, or are we doing it as an interim uh, county manager? County manager. That was your request. So, uh, we have a county manager for the next 30 days, and this may be a little premature that this comes before us at a later date. Um, my feelings are that I believe, you know, we owe a duty to the citizens and taxpayers of Lander County to do what's in the best interest of the county and to find somebody who is the most qualified um, applicant. We've got 30 days to advertise for potential applicants, or well, for applicants, people that would be interested. There are many, many qualified people within this county that might possibly be interested. Um, at this time, like I said, I don't think that this is, is the proper time to be um, looking at fulfilling this position. We're going to have this, our county manager, for another 30 days. Let's put it out for advertisement and, and see you know, who else is interested and see what their qualifications are. Because I have like, a, I'm sorry, Judy. Well, no, because like I said, is, is, you know, that is our responsibility to do what is in the best interest of the county. And we, we owe it this, to Just the for people. clarification, I made my motion in best interest of the county. Okay, I have a legal question. Um, so Art's motion to put him in as county manager, since we have a county manager currently, um, can we do that? Or do we have to put the verbiage interim? You can do it. Uh, several different ways. Uh, it's actually, uh, I think that uh, Commissioner Clark said uh, promotion, this is really a lateral transfer. Um, it, the verbiage might not make any difference there, but in any event, uh, let me get away from the legal advisor role for just a moment. Uh, and as a matter of comment, my suggestion would be if you, if, if it's the commission's desire uh, to have Mr. Ramos act in this position, uh, I would suggest that uh, it be as an interim county manager for a period of six months, uh, effective uh, July 10th, 2020. Uh, that would give the outgoing uh, county manager time to transition would give the incoming interim county manager time to transition and it would give the board time to evaluate Mr. Ramos's uh, performance. If you choose to do it that way, my further suggestion would be that uh, in the event the board does not uh, continue him in the permanent position of county manager that he revert back to the position from which he transferred. Okay. Thank you, hi, and I'd be fine with that. I'm fine with that, and then also I thought that one, it was mentioned if he did that for six months and maybe he was, wanted to go, oh gosh, I don't think I want this either, <laughs> that, it, that his current contract be extended Six for six months would be fair because I, I think that if you put him in there for six months and then he only has six months left of his current contract, it's kind of, cut, I believe it's cutting him off at the knees. Or if he's in there, you know, he's in there six months and it works out and he wants to be there, that's fine. We go on and figure it out from there. But it's six months, him or us decide that there's a problem, that his current contract be extended six months. Now, is that something that can be done? Hi. Um, I think that's your next agenda item, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'd like to make another comment. Okay. Is um, 
basically doing a lateral transfer, um, the employee's wages remain the same, is, you know, our current county manager is, through the process, has gotten, you know, cost of living raises, um, performance raises, also part of the reason for his salary being what it is, is because of being the safety manager, um, you know, being the HR, being the county manager, and I'm sorry, but if we were to advertise this and bring someone else in, we're not going to be starting them out at the wage that we are now. Yes, can that's another consideration to consider, you know, yeah, is we're... Can, can I address that? Yes, yes please. Absolutely. Um, so in the process, we slapped together, and it's on, this goes back to this next agenda item as well, so I'm not sure if we should open it, and, and but just to address your question, um, or your concerns, I should say, is I looked at me and Keith's wages since since this happened, and, and since I put this in, and we make outstanding money. That's, that's for lack of better better words, we, we make, I'm not asking for a penny in, in my salary to be adjusted a bit. I'm not taking this job for the money. But what I'm um, saying, Bert, is, is it, to start out in the position as county manager at the wage you are now, if we were to hire someone from the public, we certainly wouldn't start them out at what you are starting out as county manager. Correct, but I, I, would be, I would be taking on additional responsibilities and my pay isn't gonna change from where I'm at right now currently, um, if I stay where I'm currently at. So, in, in the light of cost savings, it would actually be a cost savings to replace me and move me into the county manager's position at the same rate of pay. I'm not asking for the rate of pay to change and that's something that, that I was gonna address in the, next, in the next agenda item. Right, I'd like to point out, we're kind of getting into the next agenda item, but I'd also like to point out that it's this commission's pleasure per NRS and code that we, it is our ability to appoint who we want as our county manager. End of story. So just wanna make sure that's clear to everybody. So I'm I do have a comment um, and, and I, I do agree with, with Commissioner Allen. I think uh, our ordinance puts forth the qualifications for this position and I think that we certainly would be most prudent to at least go out and advertise the position to see. Uh, if there is anybody qualified that actually could step into a county manager position. Now, because this has come up so sudden and we only have a county manager for 30 days, um, I'm actually okay with, with you thinking about coming over temporarily and putting in your application. Now, to do that, um, we're going to lo lose public works, although I'm sure you'd be still part of that. Um, but I certainly would not want to touch the salary. I mean, if you're coming over temporarily while we go out to see if there's anyone else and um, that may be interested and, and have a committee that we always have to choose someone. Now, I don't think it can be done in the 30 days. I, I truly don't. We'd have to really, really work hard, and it may or may not be. Um, but even if we went beyond that and we have an agreement with our past county manager to be, that, that will help us. So if it takes two months and if you're in temporarily and if you don't get that position, um, then you would go back to your full public works as you were. So, um, and if you do get it, then, then we make the permanent arrangements to do the rest. But I think, I, I think we need to look, the county needs to look at qualified people. I know we have made some mistakes in the past and we put in, in people that were not as qualified I know you have a lot of assets and, and certainly um, where you are, because I think you do a terrific job where you are, um, and yes, it's going to take a lot of training. There's no question. If somebody can come in with a lot of that training behind them, that's something that we would consider. And then the commission would make the decision at that point. I'd like to make a comment. Um, go ahead. I'd like to say something first. Yes. So for the 30 years that I've worked in the county and watched how things have gone, we've hired in this position, we've hired people with outstanding educations. <laughs> outstanding educations. And it hasn't always um, turned out the best for us. So I, and, uh, and I always keep throwing this, because I've gotten probably 50 calls in the last three days over this whole thing. And I always throw up Ron Unger as an example, came in as a sheriff with absolutely no 
background of that other than his fireman and has turned out to be a phenomenal sheriff with a lot of work for the people who work for him and support him and there's a lot of people in this community who do support and you're going to have your haters and your lovers and that's just all there is to it however but i think that this there's been a lot of people who've stepped up who are willing to help in that and i think if you do it in as an interim and this is a suggestion just to, for people to look at. You do it at him as, a, as an interim. You evaluate every four months and go, how are you doing? How are we doing? And you go into for a year. And at the end of the year, you're going to know in those when you're evaluating, when you have problems, you bring, bring them up and you fix them at that time. Instead of putting, we go out to hire. Okay, we spend all the money and all the time to go out to hire. We bring the person in and we wait to do their evaluation and we end up, you know, having issues as well. I think that when you put somebody as in an interim, you trust them, you evaluate them, and see where he wants to be. Maybe, in, like I said, in six months he'll go, you know what, I don't want any part of this. But I think that he's a homegrown boy. I think I have all my faith, I have faith in him. Whether that makes people mad or not, I'm very sorry about that, but I do, I have faith in him. Um, I think we grow up in positions, you know, like I said, when I started off the sheriff's office, I wasn't the greatest employee. I think we all grow up through this as we go through the system. And I have I have faith in him. And I think that to do it as an interim and try and see where we go, and if six months, like Hi said, there's a problem, then we reevaluated at that instead of spending all the money and all the time it takes to go out for hire, we hire him and then three months later we're right back in the same spot. I just don't I don't want to see that. So so my, yeah, my comment is just, you know, because it's been put out there that uh, to find somebody qualified. Well, from what I can read and what I know of Bert, he is qualified for that position. I'll state the reasons why. He's worked in the county for 10 years. He's, he's managed a multi-million dollar budget. How many people has he supervised? I encourage any of you guys to go talk to his current employees. They love this man. Love him. Yeah, there's some show of hands right there. So it's like, I don't want to hear, find somebody who's qualified. I had the pleasure of being a commissioner four years prior. And I think in my time, we had two or three of these people who are educated, that know they're not homegrown. We get them out. It was a wreck. It was a, it was a train wreck. This guy has to go to church, has to go to sporting events, has to see each and every one of you every single day. That's accountability because he does. He loves this town. And I believe he loves the people that live in this town. So that will determine the job that he does. So that's my piece. I think we're doing a disservice to <laughs> No disrespect to the current outgoing manager, but when the county did not hire Joe Quintana to fill this position 12 years ago ish, that not only did you lose a family, you lost a teacher, a very good teacher in the district. You lost a family that was irreplaceable. They're gone. They're never coming back. Uh, the interim, you, you need to put Bert in there in, in the interim. You're not going to find anybody in 30 days. Government doesn't move fast enough to get anybody in there in 30 days. He has a recommendation of the outgoing manager. I, I think it's a, you're beating a dead horse, for lack of a better term. Uh, put him in there as an interim for a minimum of six months. That buys time for the commission to evaluate him uh, and, and make a, an educated or a, a competent statement at that time. I agree with both Kathy and Brian's comment. Art looks like you supported those comments that those guys made as well. You hit the nail on the head with the, with the Joey Quintana thing. That's been the burning issue since he wasn't hired. Correct. That's been the burning issue. Uh, educate, nothing wrong with educated people. I'm uneducated. School of hard knocks. <laughs> but uh, we all learn. We're all capable of learning. And bringing an outsider in, unfortunately, sometimes it needs to happen. But in this position, I don't believe that that's going to be the case. I've dealt with it on the school district side. It doesn't always work. So uh, I support putting Bird in there as a as a minimum interim for a minimum of six months and go from there. That gives you guys time to make a
competent choice. And th thank you for saying that because I did, did the same thing with him on the school board of bringing in somebody from the outside and no, it didn't work. And what, I, what happens with that is we, have, we get people in here who have no vested interest in our community. They really, I, we are foreign to them, you know, from outsiders. And they get their purse and then they go. And we pay, you know, then we turn over and we, we turn over. And we have public comment in the back, but you have to come up here and speak. Okay, but yeah, so I just, I, um, I, I want somebody who has a, a vested interest and loves this community. And I think the majority of us love this, that work in this county, love this community, and want the best, the very best for the taxpayers and this community. Kathy, can I comment Take a second, quick? because we have a public uh, This is going to take one second. Okay, go ahead. Is I'm not saying put it out for bid or out for advertisement that you're, you know, going all over the nation. I mean, who knows? You could, but I did say that there are a lot of quali qualified people in Lander County that might be interested in this. And back again, qualified people in Lander County that live here, that love this county as much as everybody else. So I'd make like no mistakes, I'm not, not saying. I'm going to modify know. my motion, modify my motion to hire Burt Ramos as the interim county manager for six months with the understanding that if Burt doesn't like it in six months, he can go back to his old job. And they have six months to his contract. Going to, do we have to add six months to his contract or does that go on the next thing? Next okay, so oh, sorry. No. Go ahead. No, because you're wanting to add six months to his public, public. Uh, works director so contract. So do it yeah. now. So okay. yeah, so okay. that needs to be added now. So I'll second that motion, Mark. Okay. And so, public that? comment. <laughs> Art, did you add it? Did you add the six months? Did you add the six months to and, and add six months to his public works public works contract. contract. I'll second. Thank you. Go ahead. Hello, my name is John Malden. I work for the Water and Sewer Department here in Lander County, and uh, I've, I've been here for four and a half years. When I first hired on, the county was the most odd place I'd ever worked in my life. Nobody talked to anybody else. Morale was crap. Uh, there was no cooperation between departments. Uh, within a year's time, that had all changed. Everybody laughs and jokes around one another, you're comfortable. Uh, we, you can find a road and bridge guy doing a water and sewer job just as easily as the other way around. Um, also, when I first hired on here, it scared me to death because the water uh, uh, system was in such disarray that we were actually losing water during peak one times where we couldn't keep up. Fast forward to today, the biggest headache we have is deciding which of our premium wells we're going to shut down because we have too much water. That's happened in four and a half years. I don't know what the hell I'm doing up here to tell you the truth because I don't want him going anywhere. But I know and respect him enough to know that he's the type of man that when he leaves a job, it is better off than when he took it. And I think you'd be making a big mistake if you didn't support Bert in any endeavor he had with the county. Period. How long Thank have you, you been in Battle Mountain, John? All my life. <laughs> Can I state your name? Um, I'm Shirley Shepard. <laughs> and um, I think the idea of hiring or having Bert or anybody from hometown move into this position is an excellent decision. So that's how I feel about that. The only thing problem I have is as a community member that's been involved and in, I try and get involved in everything that I don't feel is right and I have come to the commissioners in the last few years and I've gone to call the commissioner and said and they tell me we can't do anything about that. Why? Well because it's the county manager thing. I do not like that because we voted for you. We did not vote for the county manager and when we have a concern I feel like we should go, be able to go to the people we vote for. And so I feel like whoever you get to be the next county manager, look at your contract really, really close. I've read the contract that you have presently. And I just don't like the idea that we can't go to our elected officials to solve a problem we have 
we have to go to somebody that's appointed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Point taken. Thank, Thank you. Much. And you should always be able to go to any of your public officials. That's part of the election. We are public servants. Do you mind? I got to Come on. <laughs> He's just sitting back there, be here right now. being back there patiently. Uh, up, you got to come up and speak, state your name, please. My name is Richard Edgar. Um, I've been an off and on resident of Lander County since 1979. And very rarely in life does a man have a chance to come to work every day for a man like Bert. You, I've walked away from a lot of jobs and a lot of really good jobs because of a multitude of different things. When I came to work for Mr. Ramos, I was nervous. I'd never worked in a, a public sector job before. And first, he made me feel very comfortable here. And we went through some very adverse conditions with my former coworker, and we found the solution. And I will say it was a very difficult place to be, but he made the solution. Did I get what I want? No. Did I get a solution? Yes. I think that's the most important thing you want to think about when you're dealing with a management position is not the guy who's going to do maybe what he wants to do, maybe what whoever's barking in his ear wants to do, but whatever's going to work out the best for everybody. I've watched him do this several times now. And I want to reiterate, did I get what I want? No. <laughs> I will say, did I get a solution? Yes. And this guy has been there and he's willing to listen. He will, he doesn't. He does, he's the only, he's one of the few bosses I've ever had where you come to him with a complaint and it doesn't start with, okay, what am I going to do now? Okay, he listens to what you have to say. He allows validity to what you're trying to come across with. He gives you his time. I know he's a busy man. He doesn't, he probably doesn't have time to listen to me complain, but he does. Whenever I have something I feel like I need to discuss with him, he gives me that time, no matter what. If not at that moment, not too long in the future, he does that every time. I think it would be well within the best interest of Lander County to give a man of this caliber the job. If I've ever seen anybody put their heart into something as much as this guy does, I probably couldn't stand here right now. But I want you all to know how much I appreciate the guy that I work for right now, and I'm going to back the sentiment of John. I don't want him to go. But I'm not going to stand here and try to hold him back either, because he really does deserve better. Thank you for your Thank time. you very much. Shepherd, and I'm, I know he's more than qualified, but this position is just like my wife was saying. You call a commissioner, they can't do anything. They listen to you and that's it. This job should be a comptroller job. It should be an elected position because somebody has that much power should be elected where we can vote them in or vote them out. And it should be changed to that. This, is a, this job was put in in 90, I think, 90, 1990, and it's been a train wreck ever since. Nobody, nobody ever stays. They stay, then they're gone. Just like they say, get your purge and you're out of here. Go somewhere else. But I really think it should be changed from county manager to a comptroller where they have the finance department and what the county manager does. I'm not for big government, but I think that's a cure where everybody has a say in who you get for your county manager, not just three, three commissioners. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you, Lenny. Anna Panola, um, I think it should be stated to why we have a county manager and you guys are commissioners. You are elected by the people and as you know, and I know, and Art, we've been on boards before, this is not the top, the bottom of the chain. There's a chain of command of how things are processed, who you go to, and get things resolved. It'd be nice to call you up and say, I have a problem, fix it, but that's not reality, and that's not your guys' job. Thank you. And I just mm -hmm. think you should reiterate that. Thank you. Thank you. We got a motion. Yeah, we do, but we have to wait for more. Is there anybody in Austin? Is there? Is Austin, no, because I think for public comment, everybody's open. Is there any more? Is there any uh, um, comments from Austin? No. Okay. 
any more public comment? All right. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. I would like to say I didn't pay them guys. <laughs> and and I, I sincerely appreciate the support more than more than I. One thing I want to say. Keith may not be from Lander County, but he worked like he had always lived here. The man, you cannot. Muted. The miles that this man has Unmuted. put on from this office, unbelievable. So are we going to go ahead and wait for lunch? Yeah. All right. So we'll go ahead and reconvene at 1.15, yes? All right, we'll go ahead and reconvene at 1.15, thank you. All right, guys, we're going to call the meeting back to order. So, so if we're tabling this, do I need to still read it in? Or we just say we're tabling? Okay. Keith, you're not going to say anything? Come on, tell him. Well, when we get to public comment, oh, okay. Okay. So we'll go ahead and we'll be tabling this one. And so number eight. Number seven. No, we're tabling, so, tabling it. We're tabling it. Okay. Well, I heard you say table, but I didn't realize it was seven. Yeah, number seven. We're going to go ahead and table. Um, so number eight. Um, for, oh, I got to put my glasses on. Excuse me. For possible action to approve, disapprove the district attorney's office to send a pending criminal case number 20-CR-046 to the office of the attorney general for review and possible action. Hi. Yes. Do you want to explain to him what you need? <clears throat> this is a case that involves... Uh the necessity of a forensic audit to determine whether there was an embezzlement or theft. Uh, the Attorney General's office has several people that perform these types of reviews and they do it at no charge to us. All they charge uh, is uh, mileage and per diem if the person uh, comes out from Carson City to Lander County. If we were to farm it out to a, a private uh, forensic uh, audit, we're looking at uh, somewhere in the probably the twenty to thirty thousand dollar range. In order to get the attorney general's office uh, to assist us, they require that we do a resolution um, by the board of county commissioners approving, referring the matter to their office. Okay, so we need a resolution if we approve this now. To move yes. forward. Can you give us any further information on this case? Um, it doesn't involve a county employee. Okay. <laughs> well, I wasn't, didn't think it did, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, hi, correct me if I'm wrong. Since it's a pending criminal case that has a number attached to it, it is public record, is it not? No, no. Uh, nothing has been filed with the court. That's simply a record-keeping number, uh, file number from the district attorney's office, uh, so we can differentiate it uh, between other cases. Uh, we can't use the person's name. They could very well be innocent, and it's an ongoing oh, investigation. Okay. He said that the, um, they don't use a person's name because the person could be innocent, so oh. that's why they're... Okay. So That's why they assign the number. Yes. Okay. All right, that makes sense. Thank you. So... I'll make a motion that we approve the district attorney's office to send a pending criminal case number 20-CR-046 to the office of the attorney general's for review and possible action. Sir? And could we have the uh, from the uh, chairman authorized to sign that? And authorize the chair to sign. Second. All right. Any, are you ready? Okay. All right. Is there any public comment? All right, so all in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? All right. So Muted. Then, um, Unmuted. 
It's been asked to table number nine. Yes. So hands is making sure that she was heard. All right, so we're going to go on to number 10 for possible action to approve, disapprove upcoming events at the Lander County Event Center. You want to make sure you turn that on, please. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Just push the little button right there. Very good. Thank you. Okay. I'm Moni Price. Dead Piazza for the record. <clears throat> and for the event center board, we have been attempting to get rodeo stuff, barrel racing stuff, lots of stuff. We have people wanting to come and put it on. We just need to have permission to hold an event throughout the due to COVID-19. Some of the people who are planned to put on the rodeos are not here today because they are at the Nevada State Finals Rodeo in Southern Nevada. So they are holding rodeos. The governor has approved those. There's been rodeos in Spring Creek. There's been rodeos in Lovelock. We would just like permission to go ahead with some here in Battle Mountain. They're not, nothing scheduled yet until July 31st, is it Deb? July 31st and August 1st. Friday Deb, you know, night and Saturday night. Deb, Pardon state me? your name, please. Pardon me? Did you state she your did, name? She did. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> I was listening to Monty. <laughs> so, July 31st. July 31st, July 31st and August 1st. So we're still 50 days out, and I'm assuming things are going to get better. But uh, the governor, I mean, they did, the, they approved the high school rodeos, which is going to have a whole lot more people than what we're going to draw here. And the, the high school rodeo board for the state of Nevada has guidelines in place of social distancing and masks where applicable. And if we were to follow those guidelines, we just want permission to get up and get rolling and have some events here in Belmont. Um, there's no, see no issue. I'll make a motion that we approve upcoming events at the Lander County Event Center. Okay, but now we have one more item that needs to tie into this same agenda item. We have, I believe, Deb knows, what's the amount of money that's in our account? 10000 is what you had requested on this, right? Oh, did you put that in a request? No. Not okay. Not Marnie, um, actually, we can't discuss amounts. All we can do right now is approve the upcoming events. Yeah. So because funding, you would have to come back. Oh, okay. okay. Then under comment, can we ask a question? Because we we have ample amount in there to sponsor this event. Can we use that money that is in our account to sponsor an event? Yeah, we have twenty one thousand in there. Can we use that money to sponsor this event? We also, or is it a designated uh, to maintenance and repair and? Upgrading. This is under the operation budget. I believe that you can't. Cannot. But we will keep. Hold on a second. So that money is put in the budget for um, repairs, upgrade, maintenance um, to the rodeo grounds. Uh, we went through this several years back, where the county was going to put out some some sponsorship and, and uh, award money. And it came back that the DA came back and said we cannot do it that way. It has the money in your budget right now is only for repairs, upgrade, maintenance. Okay, okay. but I do have do one need? question. Oh, I'm sorry. How much do you need to, to run? We need. Um, <clears throat> Dustin is asking for a donation of ten thousand. Now that doesn't include. The nuts and bolts. Yeah, the. To yeah. Like, to, I'm sorry. If we need to re agendize this to maintain the open meeting law, I'm happy, or Bert would be happy to sit down with you next week. We can put it on the agenda. We can answer all your questions. We'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting, mm -hmm. and then we can talk about dollars. We don't, we don't want to yeah, get all off topic. All we can do is address yeah. this, what yeah. you have right here. Okay. So, but, that's it. We can, Unless we you can, got Deb by us. We have a motion to approve yeah. the. Wait a second. Okay, we need to vote on that. I think. Do we have a? Oh, I second. Okay, so any public comment on this? 
All right. I have oh, a question. Okay. When, when we do these types of events, is this covered under, like 90, 90, 90. under the county insurance? No, they provide their own insurance. They need the... The, the, the event, the sponsor of the event, it's the same with the motorcycle ground, okay. it's the same with every... They provide their own insurance, liability insurance, and they name Lander County as a... Um, a protected, I guess, or uh, additional insured. Additional insured, thank yeah. you. Okay, yes. so we need to set up a meeting between us and them for next week. Um, but you do approve. You, we approve the event. Okay. Well, we yeah. will approve the events per the vote if we. Okay. Because okay. there's no more. If there's any public That's all we can do. Public no, comment. no, no. As long as I got that, I just need to let my gentleman know because we've already lost out one time. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Muted. Unmuted. Okay. So, um, update from the Lander County Treasurer for FY 2021 tax rates. So I, I think Juicy's gone. Okay. Yeah. Juicy had to leave. Okay. So um, this was brought brought up at a, at a past meeting. Had to do with our property taxes and, and moving our caps around and so forth. So I did I did have a discussion with Juicy about it. Um, and Lake and both, as well as Tom um, Ransbury, our uh, our financial person. So our tax cap is set by NRS. Cannot change that. The commission can't change it. It's crazy that amount. What we, and where we're at with how that tax is distributed is we're maxed out. The school is maxed out as well. They are maxed at 75 cents. At 75 cents. So even wow. if we were. Okay. Right. So even if we were to lower what we have, the school is maxed out right now. They are so, maxed. Out. So we couldn't juggle numbers around on our side to give a little bit to the school. No, we by NRS we are capped, or they are capped at seventy five cents per dollar. And like, Could, yeah. Do you have a copy of the NRS? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I talked with Russ Klein yesterday. Yeah. His Our biggest problem. His biggest problem is he's in the hole a half a million dollars every year on insurance. Yeah, no. That's oh, on insurance. Yeah. And the insurance is killing or killing the school district. Lakin? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know if you were gonna I didn't know if you wanted to read it. Right So, just out of curiosity, and I don't know if anybody can really answer this, um, this the school gets roughly 25% of the net proceeds that Lander County receives. And I know they've utilized you know, that for, for their projects and whatnot. Um, does anybody know if they're using now for any kind of operating? Because I know the county doesn't use it for operating capital, but... Do they're, we know? I, I know, know they're not so. using it because they were under the understanding it was being taken away. So they... Um, and we haven't had any money taken away. And as yeah. far as I'm aware, the school is sitting in a pretty good financial situation right now. Better than it has in years. So and they're saying, in the process of fixing the insurance problem because that is a, a big cost to the school district every year. But they are in the process of negotiating that with LP insurance and looking at other options like an HSA plan for instance that would be cheaper okay so so they're working on the deficit mm -hmm. okay. can I keep that yeah um, yeah because I don't see anywhere where it says that it, that's the cap it just says what we're required or what is required but it doesn't say that that's the cap I, I've been told Tom explained to me that oh, yeah per NRS the school cannot receive more than 75 percent per hundred dollars assessed value 
Okay. What, what the school district needs, what schools need, is legislation. They need to get the burden of retired people off of their roles. It needs to go onto the state insurance. That's what's hurting school districts. And that was stopped. I went out in 06 because if I did at that time, I could get on state insurance and if I, if I stayed another year or two, I wouldn't be able to. But school districts just are not geared to handle that type of a, and, and we even talked about combining all three districts, the hospital, the, the county, and the school district under one plan, but they will still send the actuary in to assess the school district specifically. And you know, I know some of the retired people on insurance and their medical costs are pretty darn heavy. But their insurance plan, the maximum out of pocket that they have is $2,000. That's the maximum that any school district employee will spend. So. And they can get more for their debt rate, but currently Lander County doesn't have a, a debt rate. They're not in, so. All right. Very good. Thank you. All right. For possible action to approve, disapprove the FY 2020-2021 contract between the Board of Trustees of the Elko County Library and the Lander County Board of Commissioners for the Library Services and authorize the chair to sign. So at the last meeting, I was, I was, at the last meeting I was asked to, um, or maybe it was two meetings ago anyway, to look into this contract and the $12,000 for other post-employment benefits. So I, I, uh, I did get the, uh, the agreement that was put in place, and that's in your books, back in the past. And what that actually does, and it took a little bit of uh, a couple phone calls and, and uh, some uh, meetings to try to get this figured out, because they weren't even sure what it was about. So um, I got together with um, the CFO in Elko County, and we, we talked about it, and he explained it to me. That's actually insurance for three employees, two current and one that is retired. Now, similar to what Commissioner Clark was talking about with that state insurance, that retired employee went out on that state insurance. As long as they're in that program, they are not able to get into the Medicaid program like, like we, or sorry, like Medicare program <laughs> that, that we talked about. So this is the insurance for two current employees that work in the Lander County Library, but they are part of the Elko County, Lander County, Eureka County Library system, plus that third employee that is retired and is receiving benefits. How come they can't get Medicare? It, it has to do... They're, they're too young? No. I'm <laughs> now, when I'm retired, I've got to go on Medicare. Correct. Right? right? And Medicare becomes primary. Yes. There are some contracts, especially union contracts, that went in that they simply did not allow Medicare, and they've never paid in on Medicare. Oh. So oh. therefore, they're not eligible right. for the Medicare. Well, um, what I did is I worked 40 quarters so I could get Medicare, because mm -hmm. I thought difference. it would be an advantage, but it's not. <laughs> If I were to just well, not Medicare have becomes the primary. Insurance is a real big mess. So with your time in in the PERS system, you don't pay in, in the Medicare. So that's that's how this came about. They can't get Medicare. They they have to stay on this system forever. Also, you guys do you have any questions on that? Okay. Also you guys did ask me to look into possibly looking at our own library. My recommendation is, and I looked into it very briefly because of the, the time frames that were involved in it, um, but in a nutshell, it's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to cost, in the neighborhood, just some, with some preliminary estimates, to get it started, about $500,000. We have Lots to create, you, yes, and you have to create your, your own board. You create a library board, not a county board of commissioners. It's not a subcategory like... Uh, uh, Oh, like the fire board. It can't, it's a separate county. Like a GID. 
Exactly. It's a separate board. So there's a lot that's going to go into it. And if if, uh, if that's something you want to look into in the future, I'm certainly good to well, sit with Bert. Well, if we're paying, when we're paying this contract, it's 100 and whatever it was. 104, I think. 491. Yeah. I mean, did, did you happen to get, like, a, what would a, a total cost annual be to, if we ran it ourselves? I mean, well, so like well to start it up, it would be about the 500000 And that's going to reduce because you're going to have your books. Right. So and I think software and so forth. Investment-wise, if you're looking into the future, it would definitely be cheaper to actually have our own library. Right. And, and, and like I said, we can look into it a little more. Um, but the time and they need Yeah, we, we're not at this juncture. We're going to have to go into this. We need this signed by, the, by uh, right. July 1st yeah. to, to keep the library going here in Lander County. Yeah. Um, so my recommendation would be that, that it's approved today, that we move forward with it. Also, if we were to go out on our own and effective July 1st, we lose the whole capability of being part of that E-rate program. Right. Mm, yeah. and we want to keep that in place. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing we do it anyway. And then we can move forward um, over the next year or, or so and, and look into the real cost of getting it going and maintaining it and running it in the future. My, my big concern was the post-employment benefit because you know I'm paying twelve thousand dollars a year I'm a retired public agency employee and I just I don't think it's fair to pay somebody's bill when other people are they're paying for it so mm -hmm. I like I said we need legislative remedies I'll make a motion that we approve the fiscal year 2021 20, contract between the Board of Trustees of the Elko County Library and Lander County Board of Commissioners for the library services not to exceed $99,983 and authorize the chair to sign. I'll, I'll second the motion. Oh. Isn't it $104,091? Did I read that wrong? The, the, the current contract's in the very back. I think... There's yeah, no operating work. expenses on the bottom right hand side. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I was reading the wrong page. I will amend that to read not to exceed one hundred four thousand ninety one dollars. Thank you. And I'll second the amendment. All right. Any pub are you ready, Robert? For public comment? Any public, I need one. Any public comment? I do. Oh yeah. There. I can see the end of that sticker. The only color is it. No, <laughs> not here. Not here. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Muted. Unmuted. All right. 13. For possible action to discuss the investigation of the Lander County Administration Building and Lander County Recreation Center and for the board to give direction for um, further options. So as you know, we started this uh, investigation quite a few months back into construction defects um, and the forensic auditing of, uh, of our two big construction projects. Ryan Hardy is with the firm that um, was that came from Poolpap, uh, Donna Squires. He's got a final report. You guys did re receive the final report. Also, I did get to the letter for the future if you um, to retain the company or the, the firm, but he's going to give you a report or a, an update, a synopsis of the report. Thanks. Thank you for waiting all day. <laughs> right? Thank you very much. Appreciate, appreciate it. I appreciate you having me here today, uh, Madam Chair, members of the Commission. I appreciate your opportunity to serve you and be able to provide this report to you. Um, as you're well aware, this involves three projects, the Lander County Courthouse Administration Building, the Recreation Center, and the Mountain View Golf Course, which was the three projects we were tasked um, to look at, to audit, investigate relative to the planning and construction of those projects. Um, we oversaw the retention of um, two um, experts. One was an auditing firm. Uh, obviously, I'm an attorney. I'm not an auditor. So we make sure and go get a professional auditing firm that will uh, conduct an audit of that. And we oversaw the construction defect side of our experts as well, um, retaining both of those people to provide expert reports. These reports, as you can believe it or not, I know it's about an inch thick here, is actually a summary of all of the documents oh, wow. we went through. So uh, there was, I think, 25,000 or more pages of documents that were gone through that was provided by Lander County, 
probably another 13 to 14,000 pages of documents we received from poor construction as well as a part of this ongoing audit and evaluation. So we do appreciate you giving us the time and opportunity to complete the report. We believe it to be thorough. Um, and I'll provide you with some of the um, results from that report as well. Um, a couple of those things that, uh, that I want to address in particular is the fact that um, we did find some construction defect issues with respect to um, two of the projects in particular, the recreation center and the uh, courthouse administration building. And those would fall under, in Nevada, those construction defect um, would fall under the contractual side of things because this is more of a commercial building as opposed to residential. Many people are familiar with NRS 40 that protects residential units. Um, this would fa fall outside of chapter 40 and would be underneath the contract and warranty law as relevant because we have statute of limitation issues that come up with that, which is why I'm glad that we're able to meet so we can talk sooner rather than later as some of those projects did conclude um, a while ago, but we're still within our statute of limitations. Um, that statute of limitations on the earliest project would run on November of 2021, just so you know you need to make sure and file something, whether it's by using our firm or another firm, to make sure that you file before that statute of limitation deadline. Um, as far as the um, accounting that went through, you can see on uh, pages five of my report, five and six, the um, courthouse administration building uh, forensic accounting analysis that went through there. Um, you'll see that on nearly every one of the, um, the projects that went through did exceed the budget that was allocated for them. There was a significant number of change orders um, that were um, approved. And we went through and did an analysis on those change orders as well. Some documentation was not provided, um, likely because not, Lander County did not receive it. And when we asked for it from CORE, um, they didn't provide it or they simply didn't have it, which would be indicative of some issues that you'll see later on in my report that added up to some significant valuation and damages um, that we believe that we prudent to pursue. Um, the same thing with the Lander County Recreation Center. We did notice a number of change orders with those. Um, and uh, the Mountain View con uh, Golf Course as well. Uh, they, they did exceed the budgets that they were normally allocated for. And that was because generally of the change order process. Um, with respect to the um, construction and architectural reviews that were done, with respect to the courthouse administration building, uh, as you'll see, there's almost a page of bullet points or more of problems. And I'm sure that you guys, as you walk around the building, can see cracking in the floor and other issues that you've noticed. Um, those are construction defect issues that were identified along with a number of others that are put forth in our report. Uh, based upon those um, defects that we identify here in the courthouse, uh, it's estimated that the total cost to properly repair those issues is going to be $2,734,806.83. Uh, with respect to the recreation center, again, a number of defect issues that were identified there. Um, and it, as we went through, it, and those of you that have been over the Recreation Center can see some of the issues that they have there um, with water, standing water that sits on the patios and other things like that. Um, you'll see some of those issues with the roof drainage and that. that uh, the issues to repair those are going to be $403,460.22, according to our experts. And then with respect to the Mountain View Golf Course, while there was no defect noted, there is some anomalies that were noted with respect to core construction's oversight there. Um, one of those being in the fact that um, it appears that um, they uh, recommended uh, in their best interest and not in the best interest of the county um, that uh, they go ahead and serve as a uh, um, as the general contractor in that and in doing so they identified and utilized the same person who was the high bidder which is Honeywell Construction at a cost of the county um, and with no additional work that CORE really provided that we could identify in the amount of a hundred and ninety five thousand dollar cost just to have them put their name on it. They didn't do any of the work. Um, they just put their name on it. All right, um, and so it, what they were acting clearly in, at that point in time in the best interest of themselves and not in the best interest of, the, of their client, which was Lander County. Um, I get, I'll go through some of the change orders as well that are set forth in my report. Um, I again noted the missing documentation. So these are numbers that are based upon missing documentation. If litigation were to pursue, we would definitely ask for copies of this doc these documents and request them, you know, through a more formal process. If they could produce them, it may alter these numbers up or down, we're not sure. Um, but based upon their voluntary submission of certain records, there were things that were missing. Um, the conclusions on those are that uh, if we could have those records back or get a copies of those records um, uh, or they just simply don't exist, 
um, we see that there's about $1,047,995.85 that would be due and owing back to Lander County with respect to the courthouse and administration building and an additional $806,495 for the rec center. Um, in total, this is approximately $5.3 million um, that is either damages that were incurred um, as a result of their construction defect or money that was done with result of unauthorized or unapproved or simply imprudent change orders based upon their uh, change order process. Um, as a result, um, as you can imagine, it is the recommendation um, and the conclusion in my review that uh, the, the county retain counsel to pursue and uh, try to recover back as much as it can with respect to these damages and um, monies that were spent um, and pursue claims against both Core Construction and Van Wart Bergatti um, as the architects in this particular case. You know, I sat here meeting after meeting and I had people come in front of me and lie. They just lied and lied. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this, this item right now. <clears throat> so, question on this as far as if we pursue, well, when we pursue, I would imagine, um, that, is that something that Pool Pack does, or is, how does that work? So, what, what I would recommend is you have a, a somewhat, I guess, a proposal uh, in front of you of a, of a direction to go. Um, my recommendation, as well as Pool Pack's recommendation, is to go with the current firm. They have all, it's going to save uh, additional time, money. They have all the, the proper documentation that they need. They're pretty much up, they are up to speed on everything that, that's been going on. So Pool Pact is in favor of that to continue on with uh, with the current firm. It, it won't be, well, Brian will be a yeah, part, part of it, of but there's a different lead person, a different lead attorney who will work with it. And it'll be... And if you could go over how the, the payment of that works and maybe, yep. maybe a synopsis of that bill or a proposal. Uh, I know we talked about it this morning, yep. but maybe. Absolutely. Thanks for that. Madam Chair, members of the Commission, uh, what we have here is I presented a letter. Um, my work to date has been covered underneath the pool pack insurance policy. So you guys were looking at approving their uh, policy and recently, I guess this this morning. Um, that's what I do. That's one of the things that I, I work with is pool pack and making sure that counties across the state are protected. And uh, that's, this is one of those things as we looked into it as pool pack did and they covered my costs associated with this. Um, what they didn't do, um, what they didn't cover was the expert reports because those are yours. You get to use those um, whether you retain me or not. They are yours. So you can use these experts and these expert reports in any future litigation. Um, however, we do, as Keith said, um, have, would like to be able to continue on as counsel uh, because we've already got the background, we've already reviewed the documents, and we've worked very closely with these experts. We have the expertise. So it would be less expensive to have us get up to speed because we're already up to speed than it would be to get a brand new firm getting up to speed and uh, understanding how the projects went, having to come in, review, and take additional staff time to work with them. Uh, we've already done that, um, and we've done it at full tax cost and not yours. Um, so we put together a, a plan here. One of the things that you'll notice in, on, with respect to our rates is we decreased our rates very significantly as, as a result of your relationship with full pack and our relationship with full pack. We went through what would be normal construction defect rates and reduced them out very significantly. Um, we are a preeminent um, construction defect firm. Um, our construction defect department has defended, well, currently they're defending um, uh, Elko County uh, with respect to the flood issues that are going on over there, um, as well as the fact that we have a number of homeowners, some of the largest homeowners in the country, we defend. We also prosecute claims. So it's not that we're only a defense firm. If we have uh, and can identify proper construction defect claims, which we do in mostly commercial, um, when we prosecute commercial um, type projects such as this, we prosecute those claims. Um, the lead that we've identified, and we're a, a little bit about our firm, we're we're one of the largest and oldest Nevada firms, okay? And that's, it's, that's the difference. There's a lot of firms that come in from out of state and they bring in, they claim to have 500 attorneys, right? And most of those are in New York and Washington, D.C. or wherever else they may be. 
our attorneys are in Nevada. We have offices in Reno and Las Vegas. Um, we've been here for years and years and years. I think almost going on 30 years that we have been here and, and served the state of Nevada. And so this is who we are. We love the state. That's why we continue to represent municipalities, whether it be Las Vegas Metro, whether it be any of the counties or anywhere else. That's who we represent, and we take care of our counties and, and the people here in Nevada. Uh, we've gone ahead and identified a target team that we think would be appropriate um, to be able to handle this. Um, the head for that team that we would recommend is Cody Mountier. He's a shareholder at, at our firm. He's one of my partners. And uh, Cody's phenomenal. He actually is a general contractor before he became a lawyer. So he knows contracts. He knows con how to, uh, he knows construction. He knows how to handle contracts and how to uh, litigate these cases. He's both defended and prosecuted those cases, and he would be the recommended lead for that. I've worked directly with him on a number of the municipal issues that are specific to municipalities, as that is within my area of expertise. And we also have Jack Wan, who's a shareholder with the firm as well. Um, Mr. Wan is uh, a prosecutor with the Nevada State Contractors Board. Um, he is very familiar with bad contractors and when they do things wrong. Um, that's what he does. That's a big chunk of what his, his assistance is. So we think that with this team, along with the number of paralegals and other things that we have that would work in, in conjunction with us that have experience, we can provide a service that is uh, barred on anything you can get anywhere else in the state, and we appreciate that. Um, I have provided two different potential retainer agreements um, at the request of the um, uh, at the request of Keith. It, we've done two ways. We can either do a regular just um, hourly rate, um, which is a, an hourly rate that we proposed, um, uh, which is a reduced rate based upon the relationship with pool pack. And we also have a contingency tile rate, which is what we consider a hybrid. where We have a lower hourly rate, but we have a contingent portion of the um, outcome. Some people like to do that because they say then the attorneys have skin in the game. <laughs> and, and we're not opposed to that. Um, because of our relationship with Pool Pack, because of our relationship with Lander County, we're willing to consider either one of these, and we believe in the case. I have a question for you. So depend, either way we go, are these expenses recoverable since they, they were negligent? They can be, yeah. So we can pursue recovery on attorney's fees and costs. That doesn't mean you always recover them. Anybody who's ever done a case knows there's no guarantee, right? Um, but we feel comfortable in the fact that we're willing to go ahead and take this on a, a hybrid contingency in the fact that we believe we can recover some of that. Oftentimes these cases, as you know, um, I, they go to litigation, they settle. And sometimes when they settle, that's just part of the process. And you can make that determination as we go forward. You will be actively engaged in and a part of that process. And we'll make sure and report through uh, the city manager um, who's new uh, as well. We've really enjoyed working with him as well. He's been a part of helping uh, an individual we, we interviewed as a part of the process. So, thank you. So, as this agenda stands, can we go ahead and make the motion to retain them and which contractors that have to be re-agendized? Well, I think you can give, give me direction on to proceed with a, uh, a, a, uh, a direction and then if you guys say we'd like to proceed with the direction with well, either one of the options, I can uh, get out of the next agenda for signature um, of the chair, and then we can start moving forward. Well, I, I want to move forward on this. I want to try to recover money. I'm going to make a motion that we retain the uh, law firm of Markey, Arbach, and Coffing to... Um, uh, to have legal action for our administration building and our recreation center and the Mountain View Golf Course. You want to include all three, okay? And direct our uh, our county manager to come to complete the negotiations of which way we are going to go on the billing. Second. All right. Any pu public comment? Wait one second when he's ready. All right. Any public comment? All in favor? No, I, Aye. 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 Oh, just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just have, which uh, proposal or contingency would you like to use? The hourly or the re No, that's what we want you to do. Yeah. Come back oh, and okay. tell us. I think, all right. I think yeah. they're looking for a recommendation. You and I will talk and yeah, then we'll we give them a recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, need, we need more week. input on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got you. I, I, I knew right where you were going, Commissioner. Thank so, you. I, all in favor then? Aye. 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 Muted. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much.
So we're going to move on to correspondence, reports, future agenda items. Oh, public comments. We're going to wait for public comments. We're just a, that's not a correspondence. No. Well, <laughs> the suspense is killing me. <laughs> oh, it's a good thing, Commissioner. I know that. I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> There's your chime in. So, <laughs> so while we were while we were at lunch. Uh, I, I got a phone call from Carson City, and I, I didn't recognize the number, and so I ignored the call. Um, about 10 minutes later, my phone rang again, and this time I answered it. And, uh, you know, I just answered it like I normally do. Hi, good road is Keith. And, uh, and the person on the other, other end said, uh, Hi, Keith, this is uh, Steve Sisselock. And I said, Seriously? And he said, Yeah, seriously. And the first thing that comes to my mind is, Oh. He's going to get on my back for getting on Facebook and bashing him, you know. And then, and then I says, uh, I just want to let you know that uh, Lander County in about two weeks is going to receive $1 million for our COVID-19. This has to do with the CARES Act, things that we have been working toward um, for reimbursement. It's not anything to do with, and we don't have one, but he was made it real clear it's not to to fill a budget shortfall or a budget gap. This is for our COVID-19 stuff. So um, after a little bit of a conversation, um, uh, he's gonna send some, or his staff will send some paperwork. We'll look it over. We should get a check in about two weeks. Um, my thought is we put that in a special line item and we, we use it, what it's supposed to be used for. We can't use it for anything else. And um, once I get more details, I'll let the commission know. And um, the governor says hi. Thank you. So is this so is this part of the eight hundred million that the state got? Yes. And NACO was working so hard on how yep. it's going to be divided. Yes. Thank yep. you. So you said that it had specific things that it had to utilize for. So it, no. Oh, yes. Put, well, this yeah. One doesn't, does it? No, this does. It, it's okay. well, it cannot be used for uh, budget gaps or budget shortfalls, which we don't have. Yeah. But he wanted to make that very clear that it can't be used for that. So it's, it's COVID-19, of course, related, which we've spent, um, I, I don't, I'm get, if I remember correctly, and there's been a little more since then, we've probably spent close to about $80,000. we are we are not anywhere near that $1 million mark, but we have spent some money, and that's been what I've been taking out of that emergency fund. When you get that, get that check, make an agenda item, and we'll talk about how we want to use it. Okay. I will do that. I also, mean, I'd be interested. More, if we're going to have more uh, pandemics, you know, we, maybe we need to have a pandemic. Um, and and until I, when I get the, the actual direction on how we can spend it, and yeah, we can sit down and look at if we can buy additional supplies or whatever we need. Yeah, I'd be interested in all the stipulations that go with cashing the check. So once you get those, well, maybe yeah, for sure. copy or something. Yep. Okay. So, when when would we have the uh, meeting for the canvas of the votes? We'll have that. Um, we'll see. No, she's not. Sadie just asked for a special meeting. I believe it's seven more days from today, so it'll probably be next week, Thursday or Friday. And like I said, it, it's, it'll be a one-item agenda, just to canvas the vote, and um, it could probably be a call-in because it's going to be. Basically, canvas of the vote. Uh, Shel uh, Sadie will, will read the, um, the final numbers. Once you approve it, that makes them official. And that will be on the 16th or the 17th? I'm not, it's a, I think it's seven days from yeah. now. Is yeah, they, they can still take the, by, the mail ballots. They had to be postmarked on Tuesday, right. but they give them seven days to get there. So she so can't I, do it before Thursday. That, that would right? be the seven days. Be seven there. days to get there, and then they need to tabulate. I believe her well, deadline. Yeah, but they won't be that yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so she has till the night. Okay, so it'll be uh, we'll probably look because then by NRS it has to be by the nineteenth. Nineteenth. So we'll have to do it on the nineteenth, which will be a Friday. Next Friday. Okay. So next Friday, like I say, it'll be a short agenda. Call just in to at ten. Pardon? Call in at ten. Yeah. We can do that. If you'd like it at ten, we'll make the call in at ten. 
and we'll just do the go-to and sure. quick meeting. That's it. Okay. All right. So for public comment for non-agendized items only, persons are invited to submit comments in writing and or attend to make comments on non-agendized items um, at, the, uh, at the board meeting if they need discussion of these comments at the discretion of the board. All public comments may be limited to three minutes per person, again at the discretion of the board. Reasonable restrictions may be placed on public comment based upon time, place, and manner, but public comment based upon viewpoint may not be restricted. Do we have any public comment? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 This conference is no longer being recorded. Muted. Yes. I'm